Okay. So welcome to our meeting, everybody. It's six. It's, yeah, six sixteen. Uh, this afternoon, it's a beautiful day. Of course, we have a board meeting, and it's not raining. So thank you for making time for being here, both to administrators and all of our board members and the public. And Kari, thank you for joining us from afar. Uh, we have a full agenda today, so I'm going to try to get us started as, as soon as possible into uh, our meeting. Uh, for our, uh, we don't have any members of the public today, but uh, I don't see anybody. Do we have? Oh, we have a couple. Do we have a couple? Uh, I just want to start a meeting today by acknowledging that th we've had a great start of the year. Uh, we have had uh, an open houses. Uh, there's one, Romney, there's a couple of people that are late today because Romney is having their open house today. AU32 had their open house. There's sporting events happening uh, this this afternoon for our soccer team too and, and others. So it's, it's exciting to see the kids getting started with the year and our administrators and our teachers getting excited too. And the board is excited for you guys. We, uh, I'm wondering if there's any adjustments to the agenda, any okay, so reception of guests. Thank you, everybody, for being here. I don't totally see you, but I see your names on the screen there. Thank you for coming to our board meeting. Uh, Lisa is not able to join us uh, today, so we are recording. So let's try to be very. Oh, she made it back. Oh, yes. you made it. But we are. So, but we are okay. also recording. So Lisa, we're recording. Thank you for making it, uh, and I hope you feel better. <laughs> And you're a trooper for joining us. So let's move into public comments. Are there any public comments today? Could you please raise your hand if you are on Zoom and would like to make a public comment? Seeing no hands up, I'm going to assume that there's no public comments. And I'm going to move right into reports to the board. The superintendent report. And sure. the leadership team. Megan? Um, I was going to highlight a couple things. One, um, Mark, I wondered if you wanted to give an update on the website. Sure. So uh, as you may know, uh, we've been hosting our websites for years with a company called Blackboard. Uh, Blackboard was purchased by Final Sight uh, last year, and they are asking, they've decided that everyone will use their platform. Um, so we've been working on moving our existing sites to the new platform. Uh, that also involves quite a lot of learning about how the new platform works and the editor there is different from what it was. There's a lot of new features and things that we um, are trying to determine, you know, try to determine whether we should or should not use certain ones. Uh, we worked on getting updated directories. Uh, we'll be getting updated pictures for all the staff. And so um, we started out by trying to, uh, a, a goal of getting it working last year before the end of the year so everybody could kind of, as parents, could get used to the new site, staff members could get used to the new sites, and we just couldn't make that. Um, we were hoping this summer to get things going, but with personnel changes, uh, the IT department has taken on a bit of extra work with uh, software management and other things that Michelle uh, did and, and had years of experience with, so there was some learning time that had to go into that. Uh, so we aren't quite there yet, but uh, we are getting close. And so this fall we expect to see a change over to the new website, be a cleaner look, um, and uh, we think there will be some, some better ways to access information and uh, whether it be uh, staff members trying to get information from the HR department or information about technology and how to do it or um, newsletters, whatever it might be, I think that there will be an improvement there. Um, we, we sure wish it could have happened sooner, but we are getting closer and uh, hoping for yet this fall. If you have any questions or anything about it, I can expound some more. Otherwise. Uh, that's a work in progress. Always surprising how much there is to do in uh, tasks like that. Was there a motivating reason for changing? Oh, the, that we had to, right? So okay. they, they uh, when, when that company, that <laughs> when the final site purchased Blackboard, they made the decision that everyone would convert to their final site editor and their platform. Okay. 
Now, we wouldn't have had to start quite so soon, but if we did it by a certain time, if we made the decision to convert, then they didn't charge us for any of the costs of moving the site over and things like that. The hard part about that is moving the site is one thing, but because uh, they do do that for you, but then there's all kinds of tweaks that you have to do and things like that. The new new platform is better. There's no question about that, mm -hmm. um, but it's uh, it, but it is a requirement. Um, Thank you. So. Thanks. Man. Thank you. Kara, I didn't know if you wanted to share a little bit about the ability challenge. Sure, I would love to. Um, mm, so much to share, but I'll try to keep it brief. Uh, so we are launching into an objective analysis of our special education system, which is really exciting. We've partnered with the Ability Challenge, which is a nonprofit organization um, out of Washington, D.C. And um, really the, my thinking behind it was moving into the third year of, my, of this role, um, noticing that we've had changes, as you are familiar with, in leadership. We had the impact of COVID and we're a unified system moving forward. So we've had all of these sort of shifts and adjustment in our system and we're moving forward in um, a more consistent way. And so we're analyzing our special education system to understand sort of what's working for students with disabilities, what isn't working for students with disabilities. Um, I'm particularly, I'm not interested in the staffing challenges, but I'm aware of the staffing challenges, and um, there's really no end in sight when we think about special education. Um, I know that bachelor's programs are closing because we don't have a lot of people that are signing up to be special educators, um, and so we're interested in learning really what components of our system do we want to highlight and think about, and sort of how can we maintain what we're already doing well while also thinking creative, creatively about um, how do we meet the needs of all students in our system? Uh, so it will look like surveys and interviews. I'm really excited to learn about um, focus groups with students and what does it feel like? What is it like to be a student with a disability in our system? Um, what are the outcomes for students with disabilities that are different from other students? Um, again, I could go on for some time, but I'll leave it there with any questions you might have. the team for the team from Ability Challenge? Do you, are you interacting with one individual or? Two people, uh -huh. um, which is really exciting. And then they have an, a team of, kind of an analysis team, the analytical team that will look at a lot of our data, but the people that I'm interfacing with and that will be in our schools, um, it's two women. And how, what's the time process for this? Oh, great question, thank you. It's starting now um, and they'll be here in October. And there's an alignment with our strategic planning, which is exciting. Um, in December or January, it will conclude and we'll have a report. I should also share that Montpelier School District also moved through this process. And um, if you're interested, their report is available. Uh, they went through this process last year, I believe. Yep. Um, and so in the hope is um, December, January, we will have some outcomes of that and then we'll start really sifting through the data together and thinking through, I'm excited to do some real shared values work. What do we believe in for our kids? How do our practices and procedures reflect that? And how do we make sure that students in East Montpelier, students at Doty, students across our district are all having um, a comparable experience while also maintaining the what is unique about the different communities? Any other questions? I just want to say I'm super excited about this. I think it aligns really well with the, the strategic plan that we're doing right now and learning yeah, for it, informing the strategic planning through this process and other and other ways. So super excited. Thank you. Um, I was just going to point out two other things. Um, one is this is the time of year when you have a chance to look at my goals. Um, this year, it's in here in your packet. You can read and I will welcome questions. It is a little bit less of a presentation than it was last year, mostly because the goals are based around the goals you asked that I develop, um, which is to develop a communication plan, 
um, and to continue shepherding through the strategic plan process. I also have a uh, series of goals around instructional leadership because obviously that's probably the core focus of my work. Um, so those are in there. Steering committee has taken a look at them a few different times. Um, pausing in case there are questions. And then the last thing is mostly just a logistical piece. Um, just to kind of streamline the reporting, I'll be moving the vacancy report and updates on how we're doing into the Colt report so that you sort of see it all at once. Tonight there happen to be a number of personnel actually actions that you'll take, so we'll probably end up having more discussion at the personnel section. But in the future, when there aren't um, a lot of action items and it's just the information for you, I'll integrate it into the cold report. So you'll see that it's in there right now. Those were my highlights. Happen to answer other questions. Any questions for Megan? Well, moving right along, uh, the Central Vermont Career Center, I included the newsletter from. Uh, from Jody in the packet. I'm wondering if there's questions about it or if there's something. She was able to be here for our open house on September 7th and shared information with uh, with our students. Any questions? Just because we have a very tight agenda, I thought that you know. And you can you can see uh, there's a link in the newsletter to the latest program book mm -hmm. and shows all of the programs that are. You guys want to get familiar with uh, mm -hmm. with that? Okay. Yeah, three point three committee reports. We we're gonna do that the uh, VSB and that stuff later. So let's move right into finance. Sure. Yeah. So I'm wondering if I could have a motion, and we'll have discussion mm -hmm. uh, to award the bid for the U32 truck. Any of the finance <coughs> committee board members willing to make a motion? I move that the board um, authorize the superintendent to purchase a. 2024 GMC Sierra 2500 HD regular cab pickup for an amount not to exceed $45,917 after allowance for the trade-in of the 2012 truck and snowplow. Thank you, Ursula. A second? Second. Thank you, Daniel. Any discussion? I have a question. Just because in the table it said it does not include the plow, the trade-in value. And in our motion, it includes the snowplow. So what they gave you for a, what they gave us for a value did not include the plow, and they're still the lower bidders. Okay. Um, when we trade it in, it will include the plow. So okay. that's why I did the ceiling of 45 nine one seven. It will likely be less. We're just not certain. They wouldn't give us a value on the plow until we brought it down to them, and they didn't. They, okay. They're in Rutland, so we didn't have it. <laughs> <coughs> does Thank the, you. Does the quote for the new vehicle include a, a new plow? Uh, if no. we're trading in our old plow? Not yet, no. Oh, okay. Is, yeah, Chris. So we see that there's about $3,500 difference between uh, Alderman's and Capital City, um, but the um, difference in the vehicle is 2500 versus a 3500 and I will tell you, I don't know what that means, but I'm assuming the 3500 is more powerful. Um, does that make a difference in terms of durability, in terms of what the vehicle is expected to do? Um, if, you know, if you don't know, that, I got to answer. It's no, yeah. It's, um, the, we, the, we do not need the larger vehicle size to be able to accomplish what we need, because we also have another truck that can handle that. Okay. The Capital City did not have a 2500 in stock to quote us. Oh, okay. So well. we took the 3500 as a quote. Oh, okay. Because it will meet our needs. Right. And then some. <laughs> Seeing no other hands up, all those in favor of approving the motion as read by Ursula and second by Daniel, please signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Me abstain, the motion carries. Thank you, everybody. Uh, one minute. So now we're going to look at reviewing and approving the budget timeline in page 14. So I am looking for a motion <laughs> for that, just, and then we'll discuss. Anybody 
willing to make a motion to approve the budget timeline? So moved. Thank you, Chris. A second? A second. Thank you, Seth. All right. <clears throat> any questions or any discussion? Our finance committee had a chance to, to look at it. And we made adjustments from, from last year. It's pretty self-explanatory. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and I think the things to look at is what is next for us, right? We're um, in September 20th today, and, and we'll be having the next finance committee on the 10th. And the 20th is what, the 18th, sorry, is what we have scheduled for the next uh, finance committee that includes the restructuring. But any questions? Kari, I'm sorry, I'm not doing a good job at looking at the screen. You good? OK. I'm, I'm good, thank you. Daniel. I just uh, think it's relevant. I'm just yeah. curious about how the food service budget is developed, like a little bit more about, is it, how does that, how does that work? Is it principals in concert with you, Suzanne, yeah. that developed yeah. that? Yeah. Um, last year, it did not involve the food service managers very much at all, and the whole business involved them more this year, but yeah. And do we do district-wide procurement for food? Do you know that? Um, we have one account for it, but no, they don't order at the Not, same time. Okay. The individual buildings order for themselves. Thanks. OK, seeing no other hands up, all those in favor, so approving the timeline for the budget, please signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstain? Seeing none, the motion carries. Thank you, everybody. So now on page 19, you guys have uh, the parameters. We just reviewed them a minute ago with the Finance Committee. Uh, I'm also looking for a motion, and then we'll have robust discussion in approving the, the parameters. I move that we approve the budget parameters for the 2024-2025 budget. Thank you, Ursula. Second. Thank you, Daniel. Okay. And now if you want to move into page 19 and take a look and see if you guys had any questions. I was thinking that I would read out loud my, if I get there, I'll just read them out loud for the benefit of the recording and the people that don't have it in front of us. So, so first, I included the equity policy just so that we, when we look at this and when we are working on the budget, we remember to, be, uh, to have that as the umbrella for as we look at each of the parameters. So in educational, I'm just going to quote a little piece of it. Educational quality occurs when each child receives what they need to develop to their full academic and social emotional potential. Equity goes beyond the formal equity where all students are treated the same. And then, you know, I included the bullet points below, but I wanted to just go over a, each parameter just quickly. So the parameter number one that we would be agreeing to is continue to offer and for develop the multi-layer system of supports to all students across all our schools and professional development for teachers. Any questions on that one? Two, include resources to set and achieve accelerated growth goals in math and or literacy proficiency for students on an individualized education plan and those who are economically disadvantaged. Any questions on that? Or There's been a so goal of ours as we review data. Yes, Chris? Are all students on an individual educational, individualized educational plan? All students? No. <clears throat> That's, no. This is specifically speaking to students with disabilities okay. eligible for special education. Okay. Students do have a personalized learning plan, 7 through 12. <laughs> yes. Thank you. Yeah. Slightly different, though. <clears throat> number three, continue to support our three pillars, justice and humanity, safe and healthy schools, and educational achievement. Four. Can I ask, yes. Sorry, can I ask the motion on number two, actually? Yes. The economically disadvantaged part, is that tracked somehow, or is that just... In general, we want to make sure people are doing the same. It's it's a technical term. It's the term used for individuals living in poverty. The metric most that people are familiar with is free and reduced lunch. Okay. However, that whether or not we always use that as a metric is is a little bit of a question. Uh -huh. But the metric of free and reduced lunch represents 
students who are economically disadvantaged. It's a subgroup that we know isn't performing the way we want them to, and we want that's why they're in this school. Okay. It's and a good have question. To fill out the form. The, the yeah, the only way we measure it right now is yeah. through free and reduced lunch. There's a lot of conversation about that's not the best measure, especially now that we're providing universal meals yeah, because there's less of a motivation. Sure which is actually why we switched to the more generic term, because no matter how we decide to measure it, who we're talking about is students who are economically disadvantaged. Okay, great, thank yeah. you. Yeah, no, good question. Okay, so moving on, no questions on three, I'm assuming, so moving to number four, under the threshold for penalty, it, we don't have an excess spending, so for new board members, there's always been an excess spending. If we go above the excess spending, we pay an extra dollar, and Suzanne can correct me. It, so an extra dollar per a uh, hundred, or trying to, so per, dollar. Uh, per dollar, yeah, per dollar. Yeah, but it's Currently, a rule suspended. Say, yeah. To, but we do know what that threshold would be if it was enacted. Yeah. And how for how long is it? How, how much longer do we anticipate? Indefinitely. Indefinitely. Right now, they're yeah. just taking it out, but. And that's why in parentheses I just because we don't have an excess spending threshold at the moment, but we use the average of the previous years just to give us a, a target, and it's just one of the parameters. <coughs> Whose decision is it to reinstate it? Legislature. Legislature. Yeah. So just a question about the not yeah. that I'm saying, woohoo, let's go hog wild without a cycle. But um, <laughs> so but I guess the what um, what I'm wondering is by putting it in there, um, um, if if I'm looking at these as guardrails, it's it, to me um, I'm fine with do, with leaving it there, but for me it would be more so because it doesn't exist. That it's more that I consider what that average is and knowing because the um, um, again wanting to respect these parameters as best we can to be fiscally responsible I just want to be sure that I'm not saying yep I'm all for that when the threshold actually doesn't exist right now so um, so I just want to be transparent about that. Sure. Any clarifying questions on that? Uh, number five, bring the net impact of the expenses budget under the October inflation rate. In the past, we had had always a percentage. The finance committee talked and decided that uh, giving them uh, the inflation rate made more sense than putting an arbitrary percentage that we really didn't know what, what it was. So in the past, we had said 3%, you know, 5%. So uh, that's why that is there. Any questions? Hopefully, yeah. hard to know, not knowing what the October inflation rate. Yeah, is. but it's but is but it would be real, right? Uh, Kari, do you want to speak to that one? Yeah. Um. Yeah. I mean, I mean, I think I think in a sense that is the the an expectation for a lot of people that they expect inflation to be a factor and know that um, expenses in general are going to increase about that amount. So it seems like a good thing for us to target to. And we will know that number, um, um, I guess, not, maybe not the next time we meet, but a month from now, uh, for sure, we'll have that number. And, you know, it's tracking somewhere around between 3 and 4%. So um, I think we were attracted to the idea that we're not setting it as floor set arbitrarily, but it's, but it's, it's based on this metric that applies to everyone and um, seems reasonable. Yeah. We, oh, Chris. Um, so <clears throat> our last year budget vote was a difficult one. Uh, and so are we going to know what the uh, translation of budget, proposed budget, is in terms of specific personnel cuts? So we can have that discussion earlier rather than later, um, because I don't think it serves us or our communities to have that type of discussion later in the process than earlier. So what you'll have earlier this year is in your budget training, which is the October training, which normally is just, and it still will include this, here's how ed finance works in Vermont, here's how tax, all the things, it'll have all that. We will add a baseline budget budget assumption 
it's what we used to call a level service budget. Mm -hmm. um, we'll give you that information in October. So you will know the current reality of what it would take to do what we're doing right now in a year. You'll have that number a month earlier than you normally do. That gives you an opportunity to compare that number to this number and decide if that changes, right? You get to decide that. Then the budget that we present you in November will be a more concrete administrative recommendation. If you remember last year, what we gave you was, this is what it would look like to come in at your parameter, and here's what would, or actually we didn't meet your parameter in the first one. Here's the other things that would happen. I, our approach this year is to be much more concrete so that in November what you get at the first draft budget is, here's our recommendation. And will that include, in order to meet the recommendation, if it's... Depending on well, what, depending right. on what that looks what it like, is, right. it would have reductions, yes. Okay. And remember, Hard. we are... Identified ones, just because, it, again, it, I think it's harder to have that discussion at the end of the process as opposed it to depends, the beginning. Chris, on what the reductions are, right? Okay. I would, right? Like, yep. so yes, you'll know the key areas, and and it's not a secret to anyone. Eighty percent of a school budget is staffing, yep. right. and we have five hundred and eighty thousand dollars in grant funds right off the top. That we're right. We all know these things, so yes, um, you will know the budget areas in which we would be looking at. Okay, thank you. Yep. And just to add to what Megan was saying, and in, uh, in October 18th, when we were going to do the bu the budget training, we we're going to be use we we're going to be using the that budget as a training tool, though, because I don't want people to think that we are presenting something to the board that we're not presenting to the public, right? <coughs> we're using this budget number for because it would be an an accurate way to train the board with what the needs are. You know, if it's a level service. And it's Basically. giving you your context sooner. Context, exactly. That's context. that's the that's the what that's the key. So it's not draft yeah. one. It is mm -hmm. the context. It's a it's a budget that we're gonna use specifically for training. Right. Mm -hmm. okay. I just wanted to make sure that that is. So I have two questions about yes. this. Um, so this this is um, giving us that uh, sense of where the number is coming from. In the past, it has been a number, correct? Like in last the, year, this past, is where we had put the percentage. Yes. Of yep. what we were saying, yep. so um, so then it compares to our parameter last year that we ended up really blowing past. Yep. Do we remember what that part was? That three percent? It was, it was five. Six, five. Six, six, six percent. I so I just want six. us to think about that. That we're yes. saying in this one that potentially it's going to be a three to four percent net impact as opposed to last year, what our parameter ended up looking like. Then the other thing is, I just wonder about the, and, and it's fine, but I, we need to be very clear of what we're saying. If we already know, given the negotiated agreement that hasn't been approved yet, but we know, is that already showing? I mean, if we already know that's pushing us, that's going to inform it. So I just want us understanding when we agree to these parameters, the reality of what we're agreeing to as we start the conversation. Because, um, well, you know, I'm, I'm just thinking because I can't say numbers yet. But um, so that's just, again, <coughs> trying to be as transparent as we can be as we start these conversations. Yeah, and I, and I think the purpose of this program is to bring clarity mm -hmm. to, the, to, the, to our administrators so they can, mm -hmm. they can plan in order to, to inform us. And, and this year we have the extra you know, the ESSER funds that are going to be disappearing. Mm -hmm. So it's even more important right. to have clear parameters to, for mm -hmm. them to, especially those mm -hmm. three that we just discussed. Go ahead, I Chris. Patrick and Kayla, I think oh, Michaela, sorry, first. I was looking. Um, yeah, I think it's also important. Well, so it feels a little uncomfortable to me to like approve wholeheartedly this thing that we don't really know what the number is and this, you know, if it's tracking three to four percent, if it comes in two and a half percent, like is that even a realistic number? Um, I don't know, it just seems like, yeah, it feels uncomfortable to say, sure, well, we're going to make this important parameter of the October inflation rate when we don't even know what that is. Um, and last year, you know, I think naming a specific number was challenging to develop the budget in general. So I know we need guidelines, but um, 
So I guess I would say it's a, it's a guideline. It might be that is not achievable even to meet student needs with the, with that. But we would we would know that when they come back and inform mm -hmm. us, it would be like you know in order to get to you know if it's two and a half percent like you're saying. It, so now, October, we, we would need to we would need to you know cut <laughs> X million dollars, right? So and we can't do it. You know, like it's just it's really it's that conversation back and forth. The the parameters are guidelines that we want them to take them serious, but if it becomes a point that is not realistic, like it's 2% and we can't do it because that means that we can't educate and serve our children like we need to, then we need to talk about it again. Does that answer your question? So we can amend the parameters <clears throat> in October, I think. Yeah. So yeah, so we would be able to, to talk, you know, to talk about it, but we don't, I don't want to give the notion in other finance committee, uh, Members can can help with that. I, I I want them to to think of these parameters as what they are guidelines and serious parameters, right? To give them the ability to be creative in addressing the needs of the kids, right? And making sure that the budget as way that we have been created for the past few years is that, you know we start with what what is best for kids. We we're making sure that we're saying please stay within those three pillars also, just make sure, so we are creating an area, it's not just about the, the numbers, right? So it, the numbers represent what we're aspiring for our kids. Daniel? Yeah, I was just gonna say, I think, I think of the level service budget as maintaining a status quo in terms of like the educational services getting delivered, and I think of, uh, a budget pegged to inflation as maintaining a status quo in terms of expenses, and they're two useful things to compare to when we're trying to make a decision. And in the meeting that immediately preceded this, the Finance Committee, we talked about the potentiality of not all of these being able to be served equally. So I think we're, or I think we should be or can be open to the fact and Maybe it's an eventuality that, yeah, some of these are, um, yeah, in was it in conflict. I think is, was the term used because you know they can butt up against each other, but it's a good starting place. Mm -hmm. It seems like, and and they're all they're all things we want if we can have them all. So, when I hear parameters, I hear guidelines, not straitjacket. Um, and conversation and meeting parameters are, 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 are to strive for, but yes. not to fall on your sword on. Okay. And I would just add, sorry, my no, no. so no, I saw Diane out of the corner of my head, but specific to that, just like we said last year, if administration doesn't feel like we can provide education to students in this district at the parameter you've set, we will tell you that mm -hmm. in the course of this, which I don't know if maybe that is, maybe you all assume that anyway, but we would be coming back to you and saying, um, we don't recommend a budget at that level. We might, I don't, right, I don't want to predict, but. Okay, thank you. Megan stole my thunder. Oh, sorry, because that was exactly <laughs> what I was going to say, because it is what you did right. for us last year, the right. first like after the level funding budget, when you came back and you said, this is everything we did, and it got us here, but we can't make that 6% mm -hmm. parameter that we had set, and we had to have conversations about that. So our administration does think about all of the parameters and then goes, this is what we can do with that. And so they showed us they were able to do that last year. And the other thing I was going to point out is just before this meeting, finance met, and we also talked about balancing the parameters. Not just that they might be in conflict, but that there would need to be a balance. And I was just going to say, one of the reasons why I feel we're discussing this a lot is at what, when we met as a board with a leadership team, I remember clearly there was, there was I, I read it as frustration. I could have misread it. Um, that frustration over the fact that we had these parameters and then we seemed to not pay attention because of the decisions we had made. So I just want to be sure we're all clear around what we're agreeing to and the, you know and what some of those things mean. I just think it's good to have the discussion now before we dig into what the reality looks like. 
Okay, number six. And, so and, so uh, can I, can yes, I jump in? Yeah, yeah, three quick th things is, I, I misspoke before, we won't have October numbers until November. Um, so I don't know if that, that impacts our process at all, but um, I think to Diane's point, we should be very clear about what we mean by the inflation factor, because uh, I just looked it up and what I was assuming, when I referred to three to three to 4%, I think I was just going on the national average, but, but in my mind, I was thinking that we would use the all items, this is the CPI number from the Bureau of Labor Statistics, um, all items in New England in August was only 2.3%. So I guess I, if we were going to use that number, I share, I share um, whoever said that made that concern before. I don't, I don't think that's probably realistic for us. So I guess I, my recommendation might be to ask the finance committee to look at that parameter again. Or very complicated. At least clarifying which term you're using, whether it be national or the local. I mean, when we're doing the contract negotiations, we pegged it to the New England uh, inflation number. Yeah. yeah, and I guess Carrie, the other thing that we could do is leave the parameter there when the number comes. The number comes out. You know, that's one parameter that you know Megan and her team can come to us and say, you know, it's just it's unachievable, right? Like the, this parameter is not something that we can do right now because the percentage is not. Well, tracking. I'm I'm also wondering if what might be helpful is when you get that back of the envelope budget assumption number in <coughs> October. That yeah. number is going to be high. We all know that. If you look at that number, or and then you look at the inflation number, and you look at the space between those, that might inform where you actually want that percentage to be. Yeah. And and so you might just want that information before even get having your next draft of the actual number. Yeah. That's a, so we could leave it for now, and then make that decision once we have that information. Okay. I see you nodding your head, so I'm assuming you say yes. Were you about to raise your hand, or I can go to the next one? No. Really quickly, I was going to say, do we want to rewrite it to include the C that we're going to be using the CPI for all items in New England, just in the in transparency, right? So it's written. I'm looking at Susan. That's what I would have used. used anyway. it, yeah. That's exactly what I was thinking. I'm just okay. thinking if we have it in writing and people ask okay. us where we pull that number from. Would you? Okay. We said CPI. 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 Yep. Yeah. Okay. Same. Yep. Okay. So is that agree agreeable? So that we Yeah. Okay. And I'll make it the note and this is listening this to is us. Note. Okay. So number six, develop options towards longer term configuration changes that realizes program quality improvements and results in improved student outcomes. Number seven, continue to frame the budget decisions around equality standards, equitable distribution of resources, and meeting student need. And number eight, continue to support investment in school security. And by school security, we mean everything, right? So this cyber security is all <coughs> the two new policies that we, yeah. that we passed this year. So it's the physical. Mm -hmm. Any questions in those three? Otherwise, I'm going to call for a vote. So Are we exempt? Oh, I'm sorry. Go ahead, Chris. Is there a, um, a sense of what we would do without first right now yeah <laughs> no okay. we're early I, enough in the process I would say what I would say is the same lenses that are in here now that we told you about <clears throat> last year we are, we want to look at can we implement a quality education so mm -hmm. we use the metric of ed quality standards are we equitably distrib distributing our resources across the system and are we accounting for differences in student need where we are right now is looking at all those lenses, pulling the numbers in, looking at our enrollment, looking at student need. Um, Suzanne's getting a lot of baseline budget assumptions. Um, negotiations is one of those baseline budget assumptions. That's all gets packaged into what that top number is. We already know we have significant grant resources going away. So before we... Discussions right now the grant resources. What's that? The grant resources are the big discussions. Right, so once we know what that top, where, where we are if we do nothing else, that's when we really start leaning into, okay, what does that mean? Mm -hmm. and, um, and what would we be looking at in the realm of reductions? And that's, that's being really realistic. It, yeah. it is in the realm of reductions, yeah. for sure. But I think it's, I think it's premature. Um, I, Suzanne is correct. It, the conversation naturally has to start 
with the positions funded by grants and the grants are going away. So right there, that points to, we gotta at least have that conversation and then the bigger conversation. So I'm gonna... I guess a, my on. only question was, and perhaps it isn't important to have in here, but it, and it almost goes along the lines of somewhat of what those non-negotiables are. And what to me those are, are the things like the capital improvement, like those were already committed to, right? So yeah. any of the monies that are in those kind of pockets in our budget need to stay, right? We're not well, those to... well for one thing, those thing those numbers are part right. of what gets made uh, baked into the baseline or the right. assumptions. Right. We're not going to. My point being, as an understanding, that's not up for debate, or is it? No, it is not. A, it is not up to debate because we have a capital plan, right? right. So we so, have put our resources. We're not putting any extra money. So when we had planned, if we thought that there was a need to invest or improve, that there would have been a parameter. In, to well, add I just wonder about a parameter that but, we're not touching. I mean, that to me, there are certain things within our budget yeah. that are really locked in, and so that I just was. I, and maybe it doesn't need to be a parameter, but I just think there needs to be an understanding of that. Well, I would just say quickly, technically, unless you tell us not, to, and I, saying this makes it, I don't, I'm not saying that it is on our radar. It's not. Mm -hmm. We have a very solid and well thought out capital plan. <laughs> but I just want to be clear, the board could decide to make changes right. in that but area. That's not voter authorized right. money, which yeah. we couldn't. Right. And again, yeah. I am not trying that like that is I just want to be clear that right. you do have the authority right. to okay. make that decision. Fine. I just wanted to make yeah. sure if that was the case, then yeah, it doesn't go with the parameters. Yeah. Well, just, what are you making sure? Just because well, it I sounds mean, like you're if 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 we really and, and as a board we may commit to that where we say, no, we're we're not touching the capital improvement plan, we you know, and I'm not suggesting we are. But if that were truly a statement that was locked in, then to me it should be a parameter because I should understand I'm not, there's a pot of money there that I, we're not touching. What I'm hearing is right now all discussion is open. It isn't our desire to dip into that capital improvement plan. But as things, it's not in our parameters. So it may be an area we tip into. So the, the money that we have already allocated for capital, we're not going to, take that money out, the, the decision of whatever we have in the fund balance to do the 2% or the, whatever we're going to put in October to, right, or in November, I'm trying to think where it goes the same. So there's guidelines same. and uh, budgeting guidelines mm -hmm. built into your capital plan that says every year we will put in, and I think this year it says $920,000 plus anything that comes off for your debt service will add to that. And so you've already sort of given me guidance for that number when you approve reapproved your capital plan in June. So I feel like I'm I've gotten your guidance through that. If you wanted to change that guidance later, absolutely you have that print that ability, but mm -hmm. I feel like I've gotten that guidance from this group. So but that guidance is just basically you're assuming that that's what will happen. With but that is only it's built into what we anticipate the budget would look like with that contribution to the capital plan uh, which would be a certain amount of money and what we're no longer paying in debt Correct. adding yeah. on to that okay. yeah it tells me what to budget for your transfer for the year right yeah. okay but that's not locked in. It is locked in because we have well, approved it as a board. We, we have approved as a I board. So. That, but, but if we get to the point where there's um, personnel funding uh, in a dire move versus funding a road, uh, we can make the decision to fund the personnel in the human matter as opposed to the concrete matter, right? I don't think that's a really bad idea. We would have to vote on it, of course. Yeah, yeah I don't. I, I think we're. Let's. Can I? Can I bring us back to the parameters that we have right now? And I don't think. I'm not trying to say that that is not important. I think that we, as a board, had prioritized our capital plan from a while ago, from hiring uh, um, Chris to to work with us to really creating uh, a capital plan and we, we're still not putting enough money for all our buildings in order to maintain them that we can't like go now on doing I don't I'm not 
sure that we need to have a parameter because we have put enough information, I feel, in the capital plan and for for that to not be dismantled and to say like and we have uh, an understanding as we as we budget of of those priorities and the built environment being part of our student outcomes. But I don't think we need to highlight it in the parameter unless we you know so let's not go there right now. I, I, That's okay. I just I just I think we have enough the impression that it's not sacrosanct. Um, if our human needs become greater than our capital improvement needs. That's all I'm su suggesting. Yeah, we can, we can have that yeah. conversation later. Yeah. But again, recognizing the board would vote, vote on that. Yes. Yeah, yes. absolutely. Okay. So all those in favor of the parameters as submitted with the amendment on the CPI on um, uh, move. Please signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstain? Okay. okay. So now let's move into the policy. The, the policy work plan, we had a great report. Thank you, policy committee. Mm -hmm. I was going to give it to Megan to get us started. I was, I was and, through the, yeah, and then, perfect. Finally, we agree the floor. You did say that you appreciated my update the other day, though. <laughs> <laughs> um, in your memo is uh, just a reminder. This is the time of year starting last year. We we created a policy review cycle to help guide the work of the policy committee. It has three parts. Um, things we have to review because they have changed and they're required or they're new things we choose to review or develop if they're new, and things that are on a cycle that just it's good practice to review. Um, so what's in front of you, and this year was informed, we had the opportunity to have the Great Schools Partnership because of our contract for strategic planning, they were able to do a policy analysis um, and make recommendations. And the highlight of what they recommended is um, we made, particularly with the equity policy next year, last year, a pretty strong step toward codifying some of the things that we believe in about education, and that's a really important step. And in their recommendation is that there are some pretty key places where we don't have policy to back up the work that this board supports us. The, so we looked at that analysis to help us prioritize that um, middle section of our work plan, which is what are the policies we want to either revise or develop. So in the work plan that you see, the draft, um, the things that, that were prioritized from the great schools list are education philosophy and instruction. So what do we believe about what instruction should look like? Teaching and learning about controversial issues. Library Media Center, selection and reconsideration of materials. That's actually an existing policy, but there would be a recommendation to look at it. And then community engagement. And that's the policy committees look at the, um, of the, using that analysis and using what we know would be the recommended policies to review. And the only other thing I'd say, and then policy committee can Way in right now, these are not separated out by um, meeting time, and it's not scheduled across the year because we would do that once you've given us direction about are these the right policies to review? Because some of them we wouldn't want to do until after the strategic plan is finished, and so we might move that to later in the year. So that's why it's all lumped together. What I missed. So this order of priority, um, the bullet points are at the bottom of page 21, were based on the policy committee basically looking across the board of, of what school partnership had recommended and you know, voting essentially on which ones we thought would be most uh, uh, important to get to. And so that reflects the committee's uh, numbering and weighing of different policies uh, that were recommended. Um, I think I would add on to this is that we will work on and produce a school choice policy because it's come up a number of different times with uh, two, two parts, I believe. Um, and I've seen this based on other um, districts' um, policies, is um, uh, choosing from the start of the year and also changing during the year. 
Um, the one policy does not fit both of those of those situations, um, but we'll have policies that do reflect um, a guidance on each of those situations. So we hope you um, will endorse this work plan and uh, wish us good luck. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm moving for can somebody make a motion to approve the and then. I can move that we adopt the policy work plan and review cycle. Thank you, Daniel. A second? A second. Thank you. Okay, so we have any other questions or any discussion? Questions? I also yeah, have a ahead, question. Mm -hmm. So uh, do we know which are mandatory for review also? Would, should, is it appropriate that we add, like, does this document represent yes. the work plan? The left-hand column yeah. are all mandatory reviews. Those are ones that... Um, their existing policy, it actually, it usually will say in parentheses, so B20 is the personnel, the oh, SBA I, updated I that. It's on the, it's, it's I, I oh, didn't sorry. realize that was part. Sorry, yeah. it's yeah. down in the actual draft. Now yeah. I'm on, now I'm go. on the same page. <laughs> <laughs> yes. yes, but that is a good question. So yes, the left, the left ones part. are have tos. The yeah. left Thank hand you. side are have tos. Yes. I have a question. Um, is the intention to go through the mandatory reviews first, then the selected reviews, and then if you have time, we, I'll say the we, like regular cycle. So we've, we've laid them out by meeting, um, and so we'd probably do the mandatory first because we have to have those, uh, and then select, but if we thought a select was more urgent, we would do that. Okay. okay. Can I ask another question? How does yeah. the um, committee feel feasibility-wise um, for this for this year? Well, we got a a talking to by our chair about a two week turnaround and uh, I couldn't sit for a day or two but uh, I feel better now uh, and so I think, <laughs> I, think it's very, I think it's very feasible. Okay, thank you. We agree. You guys seem happy after I just want to see like if we were like chunking a bunch in here that they might be a I would say towards that end. That's a hard to follow comment. Uh, some when we do policy reviews, the standard ones often there's nothing to change, right? So those can often be done in a quick. Um, it's the ones in the middle, frankly, that are the require the most. Yeah. Just want to say that it was a gentle talk, you know. It's, just not <laughs> <laughs> it's a call to action, but gentle. <laughs> okay, so. Did I call? No, did I call the vote? No. Mm -hmm. All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Any, aye. any opposed? Any abstain? No. Okay. The motion carries. Thank you, everybody. Thank you. So, well, I, yes. Can you tell me who, who, who seconded that uh, motion? Amelia. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. All right. So I was gonna give take the board picture now and give us a five minute break and then just sit <coughs> us through the end of the meeting. Okay, we're gonna get started. We're doing the focus group right now. So, yeah. you wanna, well, I was gonna say, if you don't already have a packet and you want one, in the packet is the vision and core beliefs. Some of you are prefer to look at it in front of you, but you might wanna refer to it, so. I think everybody else had a packet. You got it? Yeah. Okay. okay. So if you want to get us yep. introductions, yep. and then we'll... So I'll kick us off. So this is your opportunity as a board to be a focus group. So quick reminder, and I know you've heard this overview before, we are in the, we have a draft vision and core beliefs that is in your packet. And we are in the phase where we need to take that vision and core beliefs document, um, first get feedback on it, but also get some information from various perspectives about what should be our goals and action steps. That's the next step. So we're doing that in lots of ways, but one of them is focus group, and you are a focus group in and of yourselves. So the first step, in a second, I'll give you a few minutes to um, read through the document. Um, we, in phase one, solicited input from community members, faculty, staff, students. All of that information was compiled and landed in that document. Um, what you see is actually one of the mo most immediate pieces of feedback we got was readability and accessibility. And so this is actually a version that is designed to be more accessible, particularly for students. Um, so they're 
that is actually draft two. Um, so that is in front of you. It's had some feedback. We want yours now. So you're going to take a minute to, feed, to read the document. I'll give you about five, and then I'll check in, make sure folks are good. Um, and then we've got, we'll give you a chance to ask clarifying questions. And then Flora and I have a series of questions. This protocol was built by the steering committee. And actually, Kari's on the steering yeah. committee. Floor, myself, Jen, Steven, that's all in this room. And Jen is our note taker right now. So she's, even though Lisa's taking official notes, Jen is taking the ones that Great Schools Partnership will take away. I just have a typo question. Yes. yes. So on the transparent and responsible governance, yep. is it all decisions about our schools must center on students, or is it center the student? So it says center students. It's center students. It's, it's, it's a verb meaning we're going to put students yes. at the center. Correct. Yeah. So it's there with intention. Okay. In the current draft. Okay. That doesn't right. mean you can't give us feedback yeah. on that. But. <laughs> okay. Actually, I'll check in in like three minutes because it just, and we can always have more time. Anybody need another minute? Okay. <clears throat> Kari, do you want us to pop them up on the screen? Actually, we will put them up yeah, on the screen because there's other yeah. folks too. Yeah. Let, me, let me find them in the packet on my page 26. Thank you. Page 26. Screen now, or? No, that's no. Nope. You're all seeing the same. Those. So, button. I was just curious because you said there were others. So <laughs> you just. Oh, others on the screen. Yeah. Oh, yeah, there so are other, other participants. People. Yes. Oh. Other people on the screen. People in the in the, meet in the oh, meeting. In the meeting. Yes. It just says a board member would be nice to know who else is yeah. present in the meeting. That's mm -hmm. all. Oh, okay. So we have David. Yeah. Not so Kari's on the screen. Cat. Fair, Lisa, note taker, Dave Delcor, 
Orca Media and David Lawrence. Okay. Thank yeah. you. Yep. Sorry, when you said we, others, we I thought you meant other vision. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Folks ready to so clarifying questions. If there are any. So this was I mean this template looks familiar, but this text here was compiled with the input of the folks that we've been having the focus groups and having the engagements with it. Yes, this came out of phase one engagement, right. which was the one at the end of last year, yeah. yes. So and not, the formatting not the focus groups yet, this is just Correct. all of the, yeah, the, <clears throat> meeting, the meetings that we did here, yep. the online meetings, mm -hmm. and the survey. Yep. Was it created brand new? Yes, mm -hmm. yes. Yep, okay. drafted fully right. from all the themes. Mm -hmm. Yep. <clears throat> Lots and lots of sticky lots notes. Lots of sticky notes. Um, what are some things that were brought up that didn't make the cut here or that were not included or that aren't reflected here? Um, you know, this is the structure of how this came about was like an affinity grouping. So the group in the conference room had all of the data, all the. So first, the Great Schools cr Partnership crunched the data and it into about 30 maybe even more, yeah, themes that all landed on little pieces of paper for real, and those were all spread out. We looked at them and, and created affinity groups in a couple of different ways and merged things. So I almost would say, um, Jonas, I'm not sure things were left out. There were sure. some things that were more relevant to, quite frankly, there were some things around configuration, there yeah, were yeah. things around budget building, um, but the the, I would say the essence of them is in here. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, I mean, I think there are like 16 discrete statements, right? 16 sentences that are grouped here. Um, yeah, I was just wondering, you know, is this comprehensive or yes. were there things okay? There was a lot of the affinity, yeah. there was a lot of affinity, yeah. Michaelin. Um, one thing that struck me is being the same potentially is um, like environmental stewardship or relationships. Perfect. There's a question later yeah. about what's missing. Yeah. So no, that's awesome. Yeah. That's great. Perfect. This is just anything else you would need to know about the document in order to get. To we can segue. segue. That's great. Mm -hmm. Okay. So I think floor you've got. Yeah. So we're gonna take five minutes yep. for each uh, for each of them. Man, it's gonna help us keep time. Yep. Uh, what do you find most exciting or important? is the, from reading the document right now. We can go one by one, or we have five minutes of you, just whoever wants to volunteer to go first. Yes, Jen. And can, just for the sake of the minutes in this document, if you are referring to a specific core this belief, trip. can you just tell me that, and then I can track that to Maurice in the minutes, okay? It's fine if, if the comments are generic, but if it's specific feedback about a specific core belief, tell me that up front, yeah. please. And you're not required to? To, to do it, but if you want to provide feedback, this is your time to, to do it. Okay. Any volunteers? Okay. I see. Sorry. <laughs> 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 Go. <laughs> Natasha. <laughs> Go. Um, so I spent um, part of my morning presenting the IRIS framework for the EQS to the state board. And um, so I've been eating sleeping and dreaming <laughs> this stuff. Um, and what I'm excited about is that what I relate to the state board about the essence of the EQS is reflected across all of these pieces, like in, down to using same phrasing. Mm. So that was really exciting to see that the work that we're already doing is lining up beautifully with the work that the Act One Working Group and Ethnic Studies is doing. And that's the educational quality standards that are being updated for the state? Yep. Mm -hmm. And that will be presented to us later. You see that jiving here. Yeah, and sidebar, I'm going to give a little update just on the status of that, and I'm sure Natasha, because you are <laughs> such an, so immersed in it, you can help with that. But yes, that um, yeah. it's come up enough times that I think we, could, we should do a, an yeah. update on timeline and all that kind of stuff, because it is exciting. I, I agree. I next meeting. Next meeting, yes. Yeah, sorry. 
Let me know if you want me to help with that. McKenna. <laughs> yes. <laughs> um, well, the part that stood out to me as being at least one of the most important is the well-being part and, um, you know, that we're recognizing academic, social, emotional, and physical needs of all our students. I think that connects a lot with, you know, the two below as well, in you know, relationships and community justice and belonging. So, mm -hmm. I appreciate that. We have a comment and a clarifying question. I just rolled it because that made me think <laughs> of a clarifying question in that will students have the opportunity to reflect and share about yes. this? Yes, yes. Yep, have their own focus but group but in each building. building. Great. Thank yep. you. And then the other thing I just wanted to say is I I really appreciate how much this reflects all those conversations that we were part mm -hmm. of. I can hear that every, every one of those tables that we um, I really like the the sequence, and I feel like the three middle uh, core beliefs I think are closely related, and are all talking about really centering our humanity and human connection. And I love that we have the rigorous curriculum and instruction at the top, and the governance at the bottom as sort of bookends to this sort of valuing human interaction and huma our humanity. And I don't know if that, how intentional that was, but well done. I don't know if it was, but. <laughs> yeah, in, in, in a similar vein, I really like that the first word here is rigorous. Mm -hmm. Seeing the word rigorous and challenging, mm -hmm. right, that's, mm -hmm. that, that resonates with me. Go ahead. So, so I was going to say, I really enjoyed the fact that these are all things we're working on, too. Um, and so it's not like we're waiting for the strategic plan to be finished mm -hmm. and for all of these vision and cores and to have action items. We're already doing action items. We talked about one of them today where they're bringing in and, and studying our special ed um, stuff where, you know, we have the social emotional learning in the classrooms. So we're not waiting. Mm -hmm. It's it's things we're already actively involved in. Thank you, so And I think we have twenty seconds. Anybody else? There's more questions, so you're being <laughs> able to be part. So, and if there's more, we can make more time. Go ahead. I'll just say that as a new person on the board, I'm just really impressed with reading these, and really happy to see, you know, a lot of the values that I really believe in reflected really well in really coherently and really spelled out very clearly. So, yeah, good job of you. Awesome. Really awesome. So perfect segue. So the next question is, is there something that's missing or confusing? So, Mikaelin, <laughs> gotcha. <laughs> so I was just that's perfect. <laughs> yeah, right. At least for me, environmental stewardship. Yes. Um, yeah, something. Yeah. That you could probably fit into one of these categories as yeah. well. But. If we care about it. If we care about it. Look at that look. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I think the phrase financial responsibility gets thrown around a lot in our meetings and probably has a place in here. Joshua? Uh, yeah, and I wonder if specifically under well being, um, if nutritional well-being mm -hmm. has a place mm -hmm. in here, especially after, mm -hmm. because now we have school lunches mm -hmm. and hopefully that continues forever, but I don't know if that has a place here. I guess I was reading that as a subset of physical needs, but you, we could make it more explicit. If we can. <laughs> the whole point of this is for you to tell us, and then we integrate it into everything else. Sure, so yeah. Put well, it out there. well, then I, I would put out there nutritional, like and being explicit about nutritional well being and, and, and the environment. And you're talking about well being, well being. It, yeah, it seems like a, a natural place for it to be. Then a little less content related, but in community engagement and relationships, I think the second or the last sentence is a little weak and ambiguous. Um, like we say, we encourage people, but it doesn't. Pe people is a is a big object to be aiming at. Um, 
And I thought maybe both our similarities and, and our differences, not just mm -hmm. our similarities and our differences. Okay. And to Jonas's point before, I was thinking about changing and courage to challenge. Mm -hmm. A little bit more active. Okay. Well, and I'm wondering about more like honor. You know what I mean? It's, it's I guess, words mean things. And, and so I worry about saying challenge there just because I, I just worry about in this climate how that might be read. Yeah. Tech. I was going to say in the, in the first group where we're talking about building our strengths, I wonder if there should be something about also challenging students to work on their weaknesses. Mm -hmm. um, just thinking about the comment around um, encouraging people to talk to each other, I'm wondering if engage with each other as opposed to because talk to is doesn't mean that you're listening <laughs> or receiving is it, talk with? it just means you're talking you know yeah. so engaging I feel like is a word that is reciprocal yeah. and there's an expectation that, that it's going to be a two-way street as opposed to yeah. Yeah. I would thank you encourage that we include the word engaged in the community because and I, I think Dan was right there. The community must be a part of our schools is pretty weak. It just is like flop. Um, but I think engaging our schools must engage our communities is a more proactive, is a more active group. And uh, so thank you. Well, and can expect or should expect engagement from from communities in return. Like it's not a one way street. Absolutely. And well, so that, that's. Is there any element here of expecting students to be asserting and engaging back? Because a lot of this is providing, mm -hmm. creating, and kind of hoping that there will be some type of student engagement and reaction. So anything we incorporate that as a expectation or, you know what I mean? It yeah. just, it's, so it's kind of reciprocal yep. of creating an environment that hopes to encourage these characteristics that we hope for our students in an environment that we hope will do that. And kind of applies to multiple, mm -hmm. each to each of yeah. them, really, right? That comment mm -hmm. kind of applies right. across the board. Okay. Yeah, that's good. No, no, I'm taking mine back, yeah. Okay. <laughs> good timing. Good timing. So okay. Let's move to our next question. So the next question is, I see this happening now. We do a good job with, so both are just like fill in the blank. I see this happening now, blah, blah, blah. The other question is, we, we do a good job with, so if there's any of those two questions that you would like to answer related to a, any of the core beliefs or all of them, uh, raise your hand. Looking aside. <laughs> well, just building on what Chris was talking about, I think if we build an ethos of community engagement in one direction, I think we would see, I think we would see a return on that investment. Um, on the transparent and responsible governance, we as a board have been talking about governance standards and trying to work them into how we function as a board. And I feel that that we will see. teaches by example. You'll see results from that. It is something we are doing. Thank you, Ursula. I keep looking. <laughs> So I think what we do now is we do discuss things to death. We do that very well. And, um, <laughs> so I think if we have the core to, beliefs are discussing things to uh, death. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> if we begin to really put these into action, I think we'll see great. I mean, we're able to discuss things a lot too with each other. For our note taker, Jen, a couple of those comments 
also fall into the if we do this, we yeah, will see. Yeah. All right, perfect. Yeah. I figured you got yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I thought you were going to tell them to delete mine. Huh? <laughs> 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 Just break that from you. <laughs> more, we have more time with this one because this is a little bit longer, so take your time. And um, so we're, I think if, if we do this well, we'll see when the, when controversies come up within the school about what we should be teaching or taking out of, uh, you know, or not teaching through the, li through the library anymore. I'm, I'm thinking of like policy committee work, um, how that, that, those kind of controversies will come up and um, we can look to our core beliefs to help us through those times and have a strong foundation for responding to those hiccups or just, you know, outside maybe political concerns or something like that, if that makes any sense. Yes. Mm -hmm. Any more? I see this happening now. Dot, dot, dot. So the next piece, um, and, and you can see here the questions, A, they're similar, and they're also segueing to some more concrete information about, so what do we need to do? It is the action part. So this next prompt is, if we do this well, we will see, or a school that is doing this well looks like. So some of you already jumped on that. Where's that? So I was going to go with the community engagement and relationships. So when we're doing it well or a school that's doing it well, I think we would see um, more involved community, but that comes informed as well. Mm -hmm. So they'll, they'll have the information they need when they come because they're hearing it in a way that's accessible to them. Combine the uh, rigorous curriculum in humanity and justice community. And I think if we're doing that well, we will have a healthier um, student body, both physically, mm -hmm. psychologically, and emotionally. Thank you, Chris. I see the interdependence of all of them, mm -hmm. and I think if we're doing this well, then we'll see more cohesiveness. And, and that will reflect in academic achievement. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and building on that, not only academic achievement, but you know, I do think if we're practicing that joy and we're practicing that, that our um, retention rate stays high, our capacities increase, and our um, and children are more centered. Students belong or something. I think if we're doing a really good job with the well-being pieces, we'll see students who are both able to really take on more challenges on the curriculum side, but also able to engage with people who aren't like them. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I mean, I was just, be because we are in a very, um, uh, hard budget season, I would say, um, to bring some of these things into reality, our fiscal stewardship as a board is going to be really important. It's going to be a real balancing act. Um, I think that if, you know, if we, if we do this, you know, if we follow, you know, what it says in the curriculum and instruction piece, um, we ought to see, you know, two words that are not in here, you know, you know more positive outcomes, right? There's nothing about outcomes. And higher achievement, right? We don't see achievement in here either, which I also think is intentional, right? Mm -hmm. But those are, you know, those are the outcomes that we'll see. Okay. And the goals and action steps may very well have those words in them. Right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I think tagging on the way you were saying too, Joshua, about that, our, our fiscal challenges that are coming up. Yeah. If we're doing this with our with our community engagement and our community involvement, then we're really partnering 
and understanding together what that fiscally means for all of us. And so, yeah. Okay, that is the end. Yeah, Kari, go ahead. I, I have a couple. It, um, a sign of success in the in the for the first one about, about, about curriculum would be closing of achievement gaps. Something we talked about a lot, you know, accelerated growth. And then in the relationships and governance, I think it's a sign of success when we see signs of the community. Trusting, uh, trusting the board, trusting the staff, and supporting decisions we make, which is something we do see. So um, I just want to point that out. We, our budget pass, uh, by and large, we are supported, and we'll we'll test that with with the results of our configuration study. Thank you, Kari. So moving to number nine, uh, what are some things we need to do in order to turn this beliefs into reality? If we do X, we can accomplish this. Is an example. Number nine. So four, number four. We the the no, no, standard. Sorry, I, I sorry, we have uh, the questions that we're going through. Yeah. It's just no. Not, it's because in their packet it's number, it's number four. Oh, There's oh, questions so on here like introduce yourselves to each other. Yeah. Tell us. Oh, like, yeah, we skipped those ones. Yeah. That's why they're numbered. We didn't need to do that. So. Promise they're not secret uh, questions. They're not it's the same questions. But, sorry. <laughs> on the last question. <laughs> Well, it's not the last one actually. So, and the third to last. <laughs> I shouldn't even have said a number. Yeah, I'm. I'm going from my. It's, I printed the script from the, from the strategic planning group, which is what you have there. <laughs> Sorry. Yes. What are things we would need to do? So this goes under the community engagement and relationships, and so we need to seek a balance with the physical safety, which we've been increasing at our schools, but the including and welcoming community into our schools. Um, I think that I don't know at the high school as much, but I think at some of the elementary schools, it's challenging right now. Um, so it's something we need to look at balancing. And then I think... I think this is still the same question. Mm -hmm. um, is something we can do is look into our community because, like, going through the thought exchange, you had a lot of people going, "Well, we really need more community engagement," as they were on a community <laughs> engagement <laughs> item, <laughs> and so it makes you question, "What do they see as community mm -hmm. engagement?" If they're thinking this is not mm -hmm. it, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. and so it made me kind of wonder, "Well, what does our community see?" And maybe different populations of our community see as community engagement. I think that's really, really well said. Yeah. Mm -hmm. We need to, we need to manage our own expectations about what, what, what successful community engagement mm -hmm. looks like. Mm -hmm. yes. We have to be sure we're communicating now, you know what I mean? And that we're um, all in the work together and that we buy into at least parts of it so that we become a group working together for it. I'll just follow up on that and say, you know, as a, a new 32 parent, right, after being an elementary parent, it's a different lifestyle. There's a lot more than I thought, like, there's a lot, so much in Infinite Campus, like, I can't even tell you, I, like, it, 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 it's, it's, it's a part-time job being a parent of a U32 student, probably anywhere, <laughs> anywhere else, and then to ask me to come in and, like, tell you what I think about, like, like, I elect people to do that job, right? I, I elected people to do that, so I didn't have to. Daniel. I think a big piece of it is um, celebrating what, what we're doing now and celebrating the milestones, because it's all about continuous improvement, and it's... There's not going to be a destination. There's not going to be a final celebration, so we better celebrate on the way. Um, and I think also uh, something about uh, 
yeah, l modeling a lot of these things, like, well, we as a board are leaders, and presumably administration also, you know, should model should model these in as much as they're things you can model. I think we need to be modeling them because of that, you know, buy-in. I heard, I heard buy-in, and buy-in seems really like a really vital piece of this. And if we're not buying in with our actions and our statements, then I don't know how we expect others to. Mm -hmm. yeah. I'm thinking about how communities are formed, right, through relationship, in-person relationships, and we've learned this over and over again and gone through so much um, challenge and trauma with mm -hmm. COVID. Um, and now that we can really be more safe in person with each other, I'm thinking about how the students and the teachers experience community here in this building throughout the district. And the parents often are kind of on the outskirts and we're sort of mm -hmm. communicating through email and you know quick parentage conferences or whatever but and this might sound naive and silly but <laughs> like um could we potentially create um an opportunity for <coughs> parents to be more engaged in a casual way not in mm -hmm. kind of like a yeah mm -hmm. okay. and to the end of celebrating you know like and how how practical or how frequent could that be where we can yeah. engage, engage with each other more in person? Yes. Zach, you were going to say something. I didn't yeah, want to you waiting. Yeah. Yeah. Ignore that. Yeah, <laughs> under, under rigorous, rigorous curriculum and instruction, I think when we talk about a variety of opportunities, I mean, partly that needs real resources, but it also may need a critical mass in order to be able to support that kind of variety. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Natasha. Um, to piggyback on that, when I was thinking about the opportunities and experiences, um, just thinking on some conversations I had with some students this summer, that those opportunities aren't always um, communicated as effectively as they could be. Um, and also there's still a certain stigma on following certain paths <laughs> that isn't the regular academic path. Um, and so I think that that's something um, we can work on to make sure that, I mean, I think, like, God, I wish I had some of these opportunities when I went to there too, because <laughs> they weren't here, and we were definitely tracked. Um, so I think that that's something that we, we can work on. The other piece is um, we are definitely on the way, but continuing to really strive to make this a space that does feel safe for everybody, um, just because conversations that I'm a part of, <laughs> There's still, there's still a lot of concerns um, about things that are happening um, within classrooms um, and, and how some students are being handled compared to others. Um, so I think just continuing to work on that and continuing to make gains, because I think the work is happening, right? It's just starting to have the students and parents feel the impact of that. <clears throat> Well, it's almost like that, that shampoo commercial from way back in the day. You know, you, in the act, you've engaged a number of people and continue to in these forums. And with the, 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 the um, whatever the group is, the planning group mm -hmm. and the steering committee. And so now if each one of them can also pull mm -hmm. in another person so that then that web gets larger. You know, very we don't want a sophisticated shampoo <laughs> 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 I was like, hmm. Like, I'm trying to I was like, <laughs> <laughs> like wow, you keep putting on the shampoo and it won't come out. Well, and then they told two friends, and then they told us. <laughs> 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 okay, okay. okay. <laughs> shampoo. <laughs> well, that is a brilliant segue. <laughs> yeah. I actually don't know that it is. <laughs> No, it is. Actually, it yes, is related because the last question, <laughs> the last question is, and actually because we're on a meeting, you don't have to tell us now publicly. If you are interested, I know you have, you have board reps on this committee, but if you are interested in um, sitting on one of the work groups to draft the goals and um, action, steps. action steps, email, email me because that is an opportunity. 
And since you all have a mechanism to do that, and I'm not going to make you do it on screen, you really can just email me. It won't take time to. Okay. And that, thank you, board, for participating in it. If you have any extra thoughts after, email us. But thank you. We got. Thank you, Jen, too, for helping us out. Thank you, Kari. Megan. Mm -hmm. Thanks and then to the let's move right into our next item, with the, which is the ESBA resolution. No, no. First, it's a, a point oh, two members. members. To the oh, since the yeah, yep. a point two members. It, it, well, not two. Yeah, we had said two members, but we may just talk it through. We just had a finance <laughs> committee, so uh, I was hoping to appoint uh, one new member to the finance committee. Uh, and I because Eric is not with us anymore in his uh, position, uh, I'm thinking as it's just an idea, pointing Zach to fill in Eric's term, uh, not term, but position in the finance committee. And then now in the configuration committee, uh, we needed one uh, rep from Worcester, one from Berlin. And then we wanted to add a principal, an elementary principal, a high school principal, Suzanne and Megan. Yeah, you know we have three high school principals. <laughs> <laughs> Somehow Stephen just keeps the showing up them to Are everything. So other <laughs> we're just gonna go. With he comes to our finance committee, so I'm not trying to make it complicated. So I'm looking for two, two separate ones. That makes sense, or we can just think do. So. Yeah. I mean, so, you are the chair, so you can appoint. So let's appoint to the configuration committee a member from Berlin and a member from Worcester and Stephen, an elementary principal. The, to be named. To be named. Yeah. And Suzanne and Megan. Can I have a motion to that? The configuration. The configuration, oh, oh, oh. which is part of this finance, finance group, committee, basically. Yeah. And just to clarify, okay. those meetings are only the Wednesday. Yes. So will it be, it'll be part of finance? So it is the, yes. Yes. So this is the finance committee, and there was a determination that if we're using the finance committee to do this work, we want to make sure every town is represented. So that's the need to add a Berlin and a Worcester. Again, Zach, is, would, that would be more of a replacement of an already exiting person. Mm -hmm. And then that committee's normal meeting, which they will still do, is the second Tuesday, Tuesday. of every month at 8.30 in the morning. These are all Zoom meetings. But the meeting that we added that will be specific to configuration is the third Wednesday right before a board meeting at 5 o'clock. And, and that's connected to configuration. Yes. And the, yes, that, the bulk of the configuration work would be at that meeting for sure, although they did acknowledge that it is helpful to have the other meeting in case there's um, things that needed to be done. The, the meetings are going to inform each other, but the bulk of finance, you know, the day-to-day, -day, not day-to-day because -day, we don't get involved in the day-to-day, -day, the finance stuff that we need to do on the first Wednesday will stay the same, our work plan will stay the same. Configuration will happen on Wednesday at 5 p.m., similar to equity, equity, quality committee that happens on the first Wednesday, this is going to happen on the third Wednesday, 5 to 6. Can you record the Tuesday morning ones? Yes, on they, they are. There's minutes, minutes, yep. there's there's minutes are, so and then, record mm -hmm. it. Yeah, that's good. Yeah. So are these so. meetings open to the public? Yeah. Mm -hmm. like, they're they're warned. warned. Oh, they're mm -hmm. warned meetings. Yeah. 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 So, could I have a motion to do that? Lisa, did you hear my long list? Uh, I, I don't think I got all the names. Here's who I, who's, here's who I got that Zach is appointed to, to take Eric's position on the Finance Committee, and that for the configuration, I have Suzanne Gann, Megan Roy, an elementary principal to be named, and then I didn't get the others. Stephen. Yeah. Oh, Stephen, yes. Yeah. Yeah. And a so woman. And, and I did uh, rock, paper, scissors, and I lost, so I won. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you yes, won. I mean, I won. <laughs> <laughs> You have the honor of joining. <laughs> so, so who? So a Diane. Diane okay. from Berlin. <laughs> okay. And I love them. Yes. Okay. Easy. So Diane and from Worcester. Okay. You want? Yeah. Yes. Okay. Thank you, Michaela. Thank you, Michaela. Do you have that, Lisa? You got this. And who's making the motion? Daniel. I okay. I know second. Daniel made the motion, and Chris second. 
Hmm? I'm so happy I didn't have to repeat it. <laughs> okay, go. Any discussion? All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstain? The motion carries. Okay. Now, moving. That's that. That's, yep. Okay. That's great. So now moving into the BSBA resolutions, I was hoping it for new board members, and we haven't been doing them for that long, even our, our own meetings. I don't know that any of you have been able to watch the webinar. I know at least one of you attended the webinar, I think, I'm not quite sure. But uh, I was just gonna go quickly, yeah, uh, I was just gonna go quickly, each of them, so we can give guidance to uh, Ursula. Yeah, cool. But yeah, I know, but, but sorry. So, uh, guidance to our delegate. So every year we have, a, the, our, as a district, we belong to the Vermont Commerce Association, the delegate votes on our behalf uh, on these resolutions. The, the resolutions, like it said in the memo at the beginning, our beliefs and um, this is, it guides uh, our testifying in uh, the legislature and it guides our work as an association, right? So I was wanting to just go quickly over each of them if I can get to the first one. I'm not going to read who brought it up, but be it, be it resolved. If, are there any questions on the proposal number one? Is the requirement for school districts in Vermont to pay a federal grant assessment to the Vermont State Teachers Retirement System for teachers funded by federal grants shall be eliminated? It, I could keep reading. The, the recommendation of the, of the board was to do not, uh, do not pass. You know, this, this resolution, it was uh, it was not clear what they ask uh, what they ask was, so there was no no clarity. But you know, we get to read it again ourselves and decide for ourselves. Are there any questions? Who's the board that's making the recommendation? Yes. No. No. The, oh, oh, the board Mrs. making the recommendation. Yes, Mrs. the board Mrs. making the recommendation. It, the Mississauga Valley is who brought the resolution. The, but VSBA the, is VSBA, recommending. But it doesn't that it matter passed. what you know. It, it matters. So, they say, so the, res, the resolutions committee has a smaller board that represents all of the state, and they go through the resolutions first, and then we give it to our entire board for the entire state, and then they take a position, but regardless of that position, we can take our own position at the meeting, all of the resolutions that are seen again and, 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 and voted. Uh, this particular resolution was, it was, it was too, I, I didn't include all of the wording in the word areas, it was just too specific, and there was too, not too specific, too, too vague mm -hmm. in what we were, what, what we were exactly asking, so we contacted the chair and asked them to clarify they can bring a resolution to the floor. They will just have to have copies available for everybody and 60% approval of, of all of the members present. So they can clarify it at, at, the, at the meeting. I didn't want to spend a lot of time on this one unless there were specific questions or unless you guys understood it better than we did. I don't feel qualified to say vote one way or the other on this. Or recommend you, that we vote one. Are you are you guys comfortable with our rep yeah, going with the like do not pass? Power here or a even advisory power. Do, you this yeah, is just can purely you. informative, yeah. No, no, you, no, you, no, you, you she can vote Ursula however you want. Yeah, Ursula. Oh. Yeah, can vote however you want it to vote. Yeah. I mean, Ursula will do Ursula. No, <laughs> I'm not I am that. here because <laughs> like if my my viewpoints could be different. They have to be the boards. Yes. So, like last year, Kari had a comment on something, and I took it with me so that it could at least be part of the record, similar to how we have conversations on every issue we talk about. Can I make a comment on yes. this one? Yes, yes, yes. Um, so, the reason I suspect this brought is here is that when we pay for teachers out of a grant, we actually have to put in more money in that grant to cover the cost of retirement contribution. So it actually costs more money to pay for staff out of a grant. And I think this district is asking for that to go away, which I think we would support. It's Jen 13%, it's higher than that now. 
Okay, so it's high. It's high. So think about that. That's like a 20% surcharge, uh, not on the, on the cost of. Essentially, it's asking because it's it's an it's a contribution, so the state doesn't have to put the contribution into the retirement system, and it makes the grant money go not go as far, frankly. So actually, if you're interested, yeah. So so it's it just, it's over and above the fringe benefits, which I, I assume are also included for right, this Right, like if personnel. we paid for a teacher out of the general fund, benefits included, it costs this amount of money. Mm -hmm. If we instead want to use grant money, which we do for important reasons, it's that money plus this surcharge, essentially. Did, did, did that apply to the ESSER money? Yep. Yep. Jeez. yep. Where? All federal grants. When did that start? Five, six, seven years ago? <clears throat> It's been a while. It increased a fair amount yes. in the past couple years. Yes. So you're saying this is, we would want to pass. It would I mean, be not to go against the BSBA. No, 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 benefit and to pass this is what it is. Is, yeah. is that a federal requirement or a state the requirement? Part is the, part the state has decided it. it is a requirement. Yes. Okay. And so, I should also, this is, Flora already did share this. This is, they could pass a resolution and it's just informing the VSBA as to what they'll advocate for. It's not yeah. correct. So, it's not a direct path to. Yeah. So, and from the point of view of the com of, of the committee, I'm just going back to my notes. Is that they, we have some current resolutions that already address uh, some of the some some of the issues, and this one was not specific enough. So we have, it, mm. but when we got back to them, we were asking them to to maybe Make request uh, a study so that we can require federal. Um, uh, can we? Uh, Yeah, so th to reframe the way they were asking, there were areas. So the grant assessments can be funded. It's a statute rule. It's, it's a rule by statute, too. So it was it's more Vermont complicated statute. Vermont, Vermont statute. So it, that, that was it. So I'm, I'm OK either. Um, yeah, the, the recommendations was to not pass, suggest that they bring the new language to the meeting. Yeah. And if they could review, revise it, it was going to be more clear. That, so mm -hmm. either way is fine. Go ahead, Seth. If, if this requirement would go away, does it, would it result in a net decrease in the amount of money going into the retirement system? Or is it just a, a question of where the money comes from? It means the state would have to make the contribution right. instead of the federal grant. Mm -hmm. And it would, be, would it be as much as the assessment is? Or would it be less than what the assessment is? So it's not, I'm asking whether it's a one-to-one -one or whether there's kind of a penalty to use, using the um, grant money to pay for teachers. Well, the way it is now, it essentially is like we're getting a penalty. It's not, it's not a real, I mean, it's a penalty because the money goes less far. Well, but I mean, is there, it, I mean, penalty by saying that the state, if they were funding it, would pay less than the whatever percentage we are paying off of the grant. I don't know. You know I don't then? think so. No, it's no. really funding their annuity. Um, yeah. It's putting yeah. money into their annuity. So the state's either liable for that annuity or they're, this is one of the pots they're pulling from is all of our federal grants across the state. And who, okay. who's yeah. and liable? Question, oh, sorry. sorry. The question that came up is that will then there be less grant amounts if they had, so yeah. will the grant amounts be reduced? Mm -mm. No, because they're federal. federal. Okay. Right. Okay. So the money's sure. from the feds, and this is how the state is saying, we want some Correct. of that money to help us pay for this. Uh, yes. you got to give us that right off the top. Yes. And that's so, what we do. So when we pay people. Yes. So is the retirement benefit um, associated with a it's associated with a teacher that's funded by a yes. grant? Yes, and grant. it's the state contribution, right? You know, there's always a the Teachers. state contribution in addition to the individual's contribution. Right. Okay. So this is like equivalent to the state right. contribution. Okay. Right. I didn't mean to get us into it the no 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 no. Individual retirement amount. Help. Say it again. It doesn't affect the individual yep. retirement. Correct. It's just how the state is pulling yep. from one pot of money to help them fund the whole. It is related to yeah, it's, it's, the yeah, solvency it's of into the their retirement gets into the pool. Yes. Right. Yep. Okay. And it does suck up part of the grant. It does. Right. Yeah. Yep. And substantial. substantial. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And growing. Which then ripples into you having to tax. Yep. So Ursula, I would support a vote. Then. So what? Uh, so we want to vote yes on I this vote, one. I would say vote. Okay. Yes. Okay. I would vote okay. yes. Including any revised language that they bring that 
either Doesn't clarifies or yeah. tightens things up. Yeah, we are sure. hoping that it will be Okay. Megan, thank you. Is that, uh, yeah, sorry uh, to. No, no, no. Yeah, good to know. Kind of get the yeah. background yep. information. We that. felt that we needed more information. <clears throat> I could share the whole document, but okay. So moving to the uh, the, ne the next one, uh, also Bruce money. Did you guys had a chance from this came from North Country Union Full School Board? Mm. So, any questions on it before we? Go ahead. So one historical thing, because this is my school system, yeah, um, is that because I don't know if this is the case still here, if parents get paid a set amount and they get paid all year, does that still happen here, Suzanne? Yeah. Where school vacations and everything. Our guidance for our financial and HR has been told they can't do that. So that's where why this is saying. So like our paras. Um, during the school breaks and any of those things because they don't have an hourly wage going on at that point. They don't get paid during those. So we struggle with losing staff and that go there. That's what our history is. It looks different in different ways. Is it, is it even clear that those folks would be eligible for unemployment? So, uh, so yeah, what I'm you. wondering is if this would kick in to whatever legally we've been told can't be done, that it, it does provide where there'd be consistent funding. Yeah, and the, and the thing here is that it was trying to be very prescribed. So if you read the second part, provide individual school funds to support the arts and enrichment programs for students in Vermont. Mm -hmm. So it was the, the way that, and again, I reached out to, to the chair to just create some, you know, some clarity of that because to tell a this to tell you know giving us the advice to tell the district that that's where the money should be used is different in every so just think about the context that we we're talking about the entire state right so that was very, it was it was very specific to and and it is they do they're supposed to be able to get the unemployment so it was more of a district and. Actually, I don't think they are eligible. No, they are eligible. Because they, they're, not, they're, not, they're, not, they're not, they're not, they're not, they're expected to come back to the, to the reason, job unless they're being let go. No, because um, they're contracted for a certain amount of days and they know that they'll be coming back. So I don't think they get unemployment. Yeah, they don't get unemployment. But you're doing the unemployment just for the, provide, for the enrichment programs. Mm -hmm. I think there's two. So, there's two proposals for the surplus money. So they want the surplus money to be used to help school districts defray the cost and then to provide individual school funds to support the arts and enrichment programs. So specifically arts and... So we pay into unemployment insurance in the event of a RIF? What, at, at, what, so if, if, if you are not... Yeah. yeah. Okay, okay. Yeah. 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 During the school year. Yeah. 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 It, or removed. Right, 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 right. Um, and I have trouble with all surplus money. Yeah, because that's yeah, a lot. Because it's a lot. Yeah. You know, and it takes out mm -hmm. any other option. So. Do you use a different sack? Chris basically took what yeah. I was going to say. Yeah. Well, you, you can add back. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's fine. <laughs> so are, are we comfortable with the do not pass? Yeah, I think yeah. so. Yeah. Okay, so resolution to it is. This one was also, this one is coming back and they have since revised the language a, a little bit. The VSB enlists the support of the Vermont Spring Association, Vermont Council of Education, blah, blah. It, So they want changes in the way that the secretary, the agency is delivering uh, <coughs> ongoing services, basically. Uh, so uh, we already, you can see, we, we already have all of the resolutions label down there are all related to keeping uh, sort of resolutions related to helping us when we have to testify related to the agency application. And so again, this one was decided to do not pass. Without the benefit of like another half an hour about what all of these resolutions down there are and what the yeah. details are, I'm comfortable with the do not pass. Yeah. Okay. So this one came from Norwich. They are also bringing it to the 
to the floor. <laughs> it, hopefully, it, the, the chair is redoing the, the, the language. What they're hoping is that they are getting right now a hit. You, it is very self-explanatory in, mm -hmm. in, in, in here. But the way that they wrote it right now is, is pretty specific. Let me just read you what the, so I don't. So why, why do we think this shouldn't pass? So what, what we were asking the recommendation uh, to choose. So Garrett, Garrett A. Palm is the chair, and he's going to revise the language to, to clarify it, because they was, the way that it was explained, we invited them to come over and explain the resolution. The way that they explained the resolution, it was they were looking for a study first, and then to re-examine. Mm -hmm. The way the resolution is written, mm -hmm. this is an action resolution. Uh, so to examine the impact of feasibility of raising the tax rate to the same rate at the homestead rate in every town where non-restoration tax rate is lower than the home, uh, homestead tax rate. So, if, you know, the... Are the, they changing the word examine to study? It, yeah. So. Okay. I so, want them to do this. Yeah. Yes, want no, we that. want them but to do that. So they're bringing study. it. They're bringing it to us, but and no, they're, they're clarifying. So no, they're changing it from from the action to the study. Well, no, or they're changing it to the, from the study the to the action. Okay. okay. So they're turning it into a more of an action. An action. Okay. Yeah. Good. Yeah. Oh, they want to make the, an they action. They want to make an action, oh, but okay. we needed questions resolved on the way the way that was that was written. So let me see. Do not vote for supporters. Do not support. Yeah. Yeah, we yeah. In the original, we were we we were divided yeah, on it because we wanted more of an action. And we have mm -hmm. at least one of those towns in our district, do we not? Do we have, we have five? One? I yeah. believe all five of our towns were listed. Have an, yeah. have, yeah. I know Thales has our our non-residential is lower than our homestead. Yes, and keep in mind that includes business. Um, right. Lots in, and second homes, so it's not just. And I think the, I think the the legislature is talking about <laughs> creating more tax categories. Also, I think there's right. a study go on ongoing yeah. study into doing that as well. Hopefully, which also gets translated into action. Yeah. So I think we, we I, should, I, I support we the intent it. here. Yeah, yeah. yeah. that's it. Yeah. Do we support it if there's a, if it's yeah. an actually an action resolution. Yes. Yeah. So if they come back with. An yeah. action. Yeah. yeah, and you will, you will get it. They okay. haven't sent it to us, but he is planning on bringing it. He sent an entire document, but we couldn't include it because it was past the deadline. Mm -hmm. So it had to come on the floor. Yeah. And then the Winners Gate, this one is pretty simple. This doesn't exist simple. already. The, first. Uh, the, the legislation described? Right. That the governor is there isn't already a comprehensive plan. I mean, I'm not saying they're doing no. it. I'm just saying. Yeah. So we what, what we what we did not have in our resolutions is is that resolution that that spoke. So what we do is like we go through the book and see the resolutions and see and and there was not another resolution that was as strong as as this one. So the recommendation was to because of all of the work I'm that we've been doing. I'm just saying if there's already a comprehensive plan that's not being attended to, to me the resolution would be to insist or you know what I mean something uh, to that extent. So I think this resolution gives us enough flexibility in order to be able to do that. Mm -hmm. Is it diluted by including Congress? Congress. Well, Where do you see? Oh. Congress? Yeah. One doesn't exclude the other, right? General Assembly and Congress right? to well, champion lobbying House. General Assembly. Lobbying Congress doesn't exclude yeah. lobbying the General Assembly yeah. separately. Yeah. Because we have our three representatives that have been pretty outspoken okay. about. So are we comfortable with the way yes. it's okay. pass. Mm -hmm. pass. And this one is pretty self-explanatory. Do we want to debate I'd like to argue. flavor? <laughs> <laughs> The, this one, the we brought this one to the, the our committee uh, highlighted for resolutions. So those are the four that we're and the, yes, yes. This is this is gonna come up again this year, and it's you wouldn't believe it, but I can. Okay, number seven. 
Uh, the General Assembly was to bring Vermont tuition reinvestment policy and practice into compliance with the U.S. Supreme Court ruling uh, in the Carson versus making without violating the compelled support clause in Article 2, Chapter Did 1 of the Vermont Constitution that basically says it's the separation of church and state. Didn't, so. didn't the legislature do a lot of work on that this year? They tried, but they yeah. didn't pass anything. It, they pa it passed no. in the House, but then it sat on the wall. Really, in, in the, the Senate. In the Senate, huh. they had no movement, no movement huh. at all. So this year, we're hoping that you know by making it clear that at least we're doing just the separation of church and state, so that we inadvertently stop discriminating mm -hmm. in some of our religious schools. This is really important this yeah. year. I I agree. I would also uh, want to protect the historic academies, right, that have served their communities for hundreds of years, yeah, and, and not and, and not and not do what we can to not harm them. Yeah, and this one is just talking but specifically to 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 that. Well, that's that. yes, but any legislation is going to include non-parochial, non-religious schools as well. This would just ask that those schools not discriminate. Don't, not right. discriminate. Oh, right. yeah. That's that's mm -hmm. what this is yeah. supporting. Yeah. And that's all you're voting on. Yeah. Right. right. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So yes. I'm not gonna get up. I'm not gonna get into that. Or no, 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 no. No, I'm not gonna get this picture. I'm not gonna get into that. Or Eight. Yeah. You know, it's the reason why this is. <laughs> about the positive development of youth is because it is already past that eight and younger is already a... Um, Wait, where are you? Are you, are you on next uh, resolution the eight? Yes. Yeah. 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 So the reason why it's saying the positive development of youth through it is and not like all children is because eight and younger it's already passed. Is that accurate? That's what I'm checking. Oh, I see. I'm going to have to rely on... So, uh, on so you see what I'm saying, three, three, three lines from the bottom? Yep. I'm just wondering why it's emphasizing youth and not all children. Uh, that's a great question. Christian? I don't know why they I, used I the word know. youth. Were they using youth as a I think they were, we were using collective youth as, group, as, as, as a children. Eight and younger already, there's already. Well, you, but eight and younger can't, can't be do suspended, every, but this is also about restraint and seclusion, seclusion, which does go all the way down, even so, though it's not super yeah. clear, as yeah. you know. <laughs> yeah. But, yeah. <clears throat> and this one is really important, because this is going to come oh, up agree. again this year. Like, so I'm just yeah. wondering if it's too narrow with youth statements, that's all. I think that's, no, no, they're no. just being creative with adjectives. Yeah. yeah. I, yeah, this Synonyms. Any the learning is environment specific. receiving public right. funds right. seems pretty categorical. Okay. So we're okay? Yes. Mm -hmm. yes. And nine, the General Assembly shall amend Vermont's open meeting law to fully, to make fully remote meetings a permanent, vol it's a voluntary option. It doesn't mean that we're yes. going to move into that. Right. Yeah. 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 Okay. Can we amend this to so it applies to open meeting laws apply to the VSBA too? It applies to the VSBA, it's always applied to the VSBA too. So we're not going to get into that conversation. <laughs> <Yeah>. Okay. <laughs> All right. Almost got me going, but not today. Okay. So uh, the, these ones are really the current resolutions uh, needed a few amendments, and we're hoping to just do those as a, as a slate. They, they were, I, I included, instead of including the whole package, I included what, we, what I used for the webinar. So it's just really a few changes on language. So if you had a chance to, to read them, I'm hoping that you'd be okay with that. And then continuing, uh, we, we went through the oral or continuing uh, resolutions. Just we have regular and continuing resolutions. So regular uh, uh, resolutions are the ones that we review every year. So just kind of have an expiration date. Continuing resolutions are the resolutions that just stay in the books for forever. Joshua, do you have a question? Yeah, um, I just want to say that thank you so much for your work on early childhood ed, uh, number three. I read that, and when I saw that, oh, this is a continuing resolution. It hopefully comes off of there someday. That you can actually that we can actually have full day, fully funded, pre kindergarten for everybody, um, hopefully someday. 
Yeah, and we, and we update it. Where you see this is the update to reflect the climate where we are, yeah. where, where we are now. But yeah. hopefully, this is gonna always. It might always just always stay in the books because it's a value that we will have forever, right? right? So it doesn't matter what it. it it shouldn't see, go away. Yeah. It shouldn't go away. I this is a continuous okay. resolution because it's something we believe on. Right, it's right, kind right. of the foundation of one of the foundations. Can I ask you a question about IL? Sure. Yeah. Or 1L? Yeah. So are they, are they no longer doing that statewide chart of accounts, or is there a reason why they're no longer? Yeah, there's no. Okay. We're not they took it away. No, okay. yeah, they took it away. So yep. Yeah, they sure took it away. Either. Yeah, yeah. That's Doesn't mean they won't do it again. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> That's why that part went yeah, away. Okay. Yeah. Chapter two. They, they, they're still required to state what charge of accounts. Yeah. They're just not mandating the, yeah. that type of software we use. Yes. Okay. That was the big right. controversy. Yeah. Controversy. Right. Exactly. Yeah. Suzanne, does that make your life easier? Does that make life easier for financial managers in school districts? Um. That you can choose your tools. I mean, I, I imagine it means you can choose your tools. Yes. Yeah. Yes, and I think financially it helps this school district, who's a, a much better, person. more sophisticated yeah. district than many. Yeah, yeah. Um, a lot of people <laughs> choose really overpriced products. I think personally, and uh, they have lots of bells and whistles that half the time people don't even use. And as long as the product is giving you what you need, mm -hmm. you, make, you make it work. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's just thirty seconds. When I first started doing this, and I started seeing the. Um, the, uh, you know, all the financial stuff that we have to um, uh, to do. And I asked Lori, right, can we get different columns? Can it be arranged differently? I'm like, absolutely not, <laughs> right? Because it requires, like, adjusting the query in the back end that has to be done by the software company. Th that may not be the case anymore, but, like, more flexibility and more freedom for, for you. Yeah. Absolutely. Our software company is fantastic about building reports. Anything they really? want, they'll build. Really? They're, they're really great. And they're really well-priced, like, they don't overcharge for anything. Something for the future, like more comprehensible board orders. Okay. So uh, we still it, have some work done. Yes. Yeah. Does, does this look good? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Do you, okay. So now we can appoint our annual voting delegate. Could I have a motion to appoint? Four celebs already going to the conference. So moved. Second. Okay, so did you get that? Lisa, Chris moved and Jonah second. To, 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 to not Yes, to be our voting okay. delegate. So the Chris and who? Oh, Jonas. Jonas, okay, yeah. Thanks. All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Hearing on the motion carries, and we also, uh, Keely is coming one of the days, and uh, Amalia is coming both days, and uh, Ursula is coming both days, so there's still time yeah. if somebody changes their mind. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, approve the minutes. Could I have a motion? We just moved into our consent agenda. I move to approve the minutes of August 23rd. In fact, second, second by Ursula. Any discussion or Changes? All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Thank you. All right, so moving into the board orders. Lindy Johnson Memorial. Yes. <laughs> Honorary. Honorary. <laughs> no, no, <laughs> <kill you. laughs> I feel that We miss her. That's it. <laughs> okay. The board orders came in a separate. Yeah. Yeah. No, it's not. Right, so, did I have that motion? Mm -hmm. If somebody has it in front of them, is that person? Oh, oh. Send around. You want me to send, send it? Around? Yeah. Person, ready. Person, are you ready? I, Go ahead. I move that we approve the board orders and the total uh, for August 17th through September 20th. In the total amount of one million eight hundred and sixty seven thousand five hundred and sixty eight dollars and fifty three cents. Seconded. Thank you. Any discussion? 
seeing so, that. Sorry, can you repeat the amount? First of all, sorry about that. And Jonas, did you second it? I'm I did. A hard time call. I did. Okay, yes. okay. Total amount is one million eight hundred sixty-seven thousand five hundred sixty-eight dollars and fifty-three cents. Thank you. Okay, and um, we got everything? Yeah, yes, everything. Yes, there is a total yes. amount. All, all those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Carrying on the motion carries. I feel bad for Carrie, he needs to get out in that sunshine. Okay, let's move. Uh, personnel request, page 58. Oops. Oh, yeah. Where? Should I send it back? Oh, either way, whichever direction. Why don't we do this for here? So I can yeah, do you want to sure. get us started? So there's two things in this memo, um, and, and I would assume the board might want to talk about them separately. Um, one of them is, oh, it's actually two positions um, for one position, a partial position at U32 and a partial position at Rumney. This is a, the board needs to approve licensed positions, um, as it says in the memo in two cases, and we can answer questions individually, but um, long-standing para vacancies that, that are, con they have been vacant for a long time. We have no qualified applicants. We are trying to be creative with how to meet needs. Um, so we have a desire to, um, in a cost-neutral manner, add a professional FTE, um, one at U32, one at Romney. These are unrelated requests. They just happen to happen at the same time. But you have to approve them because they are positions that were not in the original budget. Um, but they are cost-neutral. So that is one action. And then... More than a year. No. So what, we would, what we've said to each building is if they decide that that is a better way to provide that service, they can ask for those positions in the budget. And, they, and then that would mean permanently reducing the other two. So, um, so you are not making a decision for after this year. It's just to help us get through this year. If it works and they like it, they might come back to you with that proposal. But for now, yeah. That's a refunding. Correct. So could I could I have a motion for the first one? They use thirty two. I move five to I move that the board approve a budget amendment to add a budget neutral addition of up to 0.5 FTE uh, for a U thirty two five hundred four coordinator. Second, Jonas. So moved by Jonas. Second, uh, Natasha. Oh, Natasha. Sorry. Okay, you got Nikhil that, Lisa. The Caitlin. Okay. Oh. Uh, all those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Oops, sorry. Sorry, Michaela, and I thought it was Natasha. So did I. It was in that direction. Okay, do you want to make the next motion, Michaela? Michaela is busting up laughing, so I will move to approve a budget amendment to add a budget neutral addition of up to uh, a 0.5 FTE special educator at Romney. Thank you, Jonas, and I I'll hear that Michaela is yeah. seconding. <laughs> Okay, you got that, Lisa? Sorry, we're making it more complicated for you. I'm assuming you got that. All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Seconded okay. it. By Kate Kalen. Great question. Okay. <laughs> All right. Okay, so the next one, um, and again, in the interest of not just repeating what's written in the memo, the context that I would give you is, um, you have heard in various different ways, um, we have a very small central office of very hard working, skilled people who are working a lot more than they should be working and have been for quite a while. We spent uh, the better part of last year analyzing people's workloads. We had significant amounts of overtime being being done, reshuffling jobs, moving the responsibilities around, um, and knew that we may be coming to you in the budget season with a request for an additional position, um, have landed on the fact that that really needs to be in the realm of human resources. Um, <coughs> what we have since discovered is that we don't think we can wait an entire year. Um, we really need this position now. Um, there's a lot in there uh, kind of about the why, but 
our biggest concern right now is that we are going to lose good people because they are working so much and so hard. And there is a body of work, quite frankly, that we're just not getting to. We are getting people paid. We're getting timesheets done. We're getting people onboarded to the best we can. We're doing all those really important things. And there's a lot of policies, procedures, things that would make our hiring processes better and more expansive um, that we're just not able to do. Um, and so what we are hoping the board would do is um, this is not a budget neutral position. This is a position that can be comfortably funded with our fund balance. Um, and it requires your approval. So Suzanne's here, other yeah. central office folks are here. We're happy to answer questions. Can I have a motion and then we'll discuss? Sure. Just I because of the time. I move to approve a budget amendment to add a uh, one uh, a full-time uh, director of human resources position. Thank you, Jonas. Uh, second. second. Second by Daniel. OK, discussion and questions? Ballpark amount. One fifty, probably. Full, full with full benefits. With benefits. So, what, what what are the director's roles? Because um, when I hear director, it sounds more supervisory than um, coordinator. Boots on the ground. Yeah. Coordinating things. Okay. Is that? Well, so the, first. All of our boots are on the ground. And I would oh, be remiss true. if I did not say that. Um, no, no. And <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. It's late in the evening. Um, no, but to your point, this is a higher level position because the things that we are most not doing right now are um, working closely with the leadership team to develop policies and procedures, thinking really carefully about labor management and how we interact with teachers and how we build better relationships and um, how can we spend more time on that. Um, how can we, you know, we've got gr really important goals about um, making sure our, uh, the people who work here look like the students here. We can't get to that higher level work. So yes, it is a higher level work. Um, at the moment, I don't know that this person would directly support or directly supervise current people that may evolve to that over time, but it's less about supervisory so much as it is, this person needs to be part of the leadership team. They need to sort of be looking at a slightly higher skill set. That's why it's a director proposal. Okay, so, the, so does it relieve work from people who are doing it now? Absolutely, yes. because it, it for, for one thing, Suzanne is doing quite a bit of this work. Mm -hmm. We are all sort of writing policy, or not policy, but we're all trying to write HR procedures and we're not HR specialists. I mean, we're doing the best we can, but um, yes. And this person would report to Suzanne. Even though it says received direction from and evaluated by the superintendent. <laughs> yes, because we went back and forth on that part of it. Um, so, and thanks for pointing out we haven't updated it. This is the this is the current draft of the job description, and those evolved. But we wanted to give you a sense of what it was. Thank you for catching that. So it should say. Excuse it should say business okay. administrator. Yeah. Any other? Kari. So I, I'm, in general, very supportive of this. I, yeah. I'll, I've always wondered why we didn't have this position and and think that we are understaffed in this part of our operation. And, um, my, my concern is that it's a significant ask in mid-year. So can you just speak to, Megan, why this didn't come up in last year's budgeting process? That's a great question, and for a couple of reasons. One. At budget season last year, we weren't sure yet if human resources was where the, the resource was needed, right? We were taking the operations position, peeling off a lot of job duties. We were in the process of bringing on new people in payroll and benefits and trying to say, oh, when we, as we bring new people on to existing positions and we reshuffle, does that right size it? Does that cut down on the um, overtime? So we just didn't know, frankly, what we needed at that point. And we were still working with an HR consultant. So we were uh, someone who, they're actually affiliated with the firm that audits us. They have an HR consultant. She worked with us to help develop a lot of this, help us do that analysis. And we were just too early in the process to know last year. It's a fair question, though. So one of my difficulties of supporting this request is that we're going to go into a budget season where we're, we're going to be looking to cut teaching mm -hmm. staff, I suspect. Uh, and um, I, I just 
can't square that with voting for this. Uh, so just to lay my cards on the table. And, and I know that it's all part of a team, um, but in terms of providing direct s services to students, and I know it's hypothetical now, but I really think it's a serious hypothetical that is coming down the pike, given what we heard last year about having a terrible budget year coming up. Uh, I just I can't support an expenditure well, like this now. Let's, let's, take, let's take some turns. I just, I just want to say that you've been on the board for as long as I have been on mm -hmm. the board, and we've been talking about this position for a while. As missing in our, as missing our decision. So I just wanted to point that out, and then I'll share some more. But well, Diane and, and well, Joshua, let me, let me Joshua, respond to that first of all, um, just because yeah. um, if we've been talking about it for a while and we're doing it now in the midst of a tough budget year that's coming up, we could have done it and had a better discussion about it in last year because the need was known then. But it didn't come up last year. It's come before because we've well, been short staffed and. I, I, I guess I'm going to let Joshua talk mm -hmm. and then I'll answer. I think Diane was yeah. first. Oh, yeah, well, Diane. so what I heard you say was there's been an, an amount, a huge amount of overtime. Mm -hmm. So I think to me it would be helpful to see those cost Quantify comparisons. That. Yeah. So that because if, if we're already expending that, then of course it makes sense to do it more efficiently and effectively. The other part, I do have the same concerns that, that Chris said in terms of as we're weighing all decisions because to me this one is once we agree to it it, it's, it is and locked in isn't the right phrase but that you know because we've identified that so what I'm wondering about in terms of future meetings around the budget is having a strong understanding of what is the central office portion of the budget, which, and, and forgive me, it may have been there, I just can't remember, but you know, what's that part of it? What's, you know, what are all the nuances of the budget, just so that I better understand what we're looking at. But again, to the first part of it is, it would be helpful to me to see all the overtime that's needed. And I think this is a current focus that's happening across the state where we're realizing uh, what we're missing out on by not having a person in this role because we just did it up in the country as well. I'll just respond real quick before Joshua. Um, just Chris, this is the board's decision. Mm -hmm. We are asking you. The, the, what, the thing that I would tell you is that it is, in our opinion, we are very well aware of the budget season. We're very well aware of the timing of this ask. We wouldn't, we don't take that lightly. We wouldn't be coming to you if we didn't feel desperate. I'm using that word. And the desperation for me is if we lose people in central office, if we lost anyone, quite frankly, <clears throat> then paychecks won't come. That's important to the people that sit in front of kids. So I don't mean to be dramatic about it. I'm just sort of, uh, all of you have to weigh all of it and you have to make your, your decision, but I'm just reinforcing that we're here asking you and we are totally aware of the budget season we're headed into, the cliff, all those things. It's really hard. I guess, um, yeah, I mean, I, would ha I, I support this. Um, I've been in organizations and businesses, and I've had family in organizations, organizations and businesses that have gone through significant reconfiguration, and staff burnout is real, and those people leave. You know, and I don't think that I'd want to risk losing anybody in the central office and having to find and, and bring those people up to speed. I mean, I, I don't think we could find the kind of quali qualified people we have without a lot of heartache and without a lot of trouble, um, which w could cost us even more money than this in the end. Um, we don't know. I, but I do, it would worry me if someone were to quit knowing how hard these people work. Um, so yeah, I would support this. I, I guess I will, I will add to that, that for a year. Oh, you, yeah, go ahead, you go first. Um, just to, to speak to Chris's concern, um, what is our ratio of administrative to classroom staff mm. salaries and how does that compare oh, to, to Salary schools, number, I wouldn't be able to like tell costs, you that. Like how much the budget is? administrative and front office versus classroom really and is that are, are we normal are we paying more are we paying less for administrative costs 
I'm not 100% sure I understand the question because there's different varieties of administrative costs. So. Well, big buckets here, right? Yeah. Like front office and administering, right, and like support staff. I don't then, think we'd be able to pull the numbers for you right now. What I can tell you is central office size is small compared to districts our that's, size. See, yes. That's yes. fine. Numbers associated with it, we'd have fine. to look that's that up for you. That's what we're just looking for yep. ballpark. And I would also direct you to some information here about general human resources mm -hmm. support as it relates to per employee. We are way understaffed, and we're not even asking you to get us to the, the average um, of what um, society for human resource management recommends that you have to support the number of contracted people that we have in this organization, not even counting your subs, which subs are a whole other beast here that we do support in a different way. And, and is it correct that we've been using more subs in the last few years than, than previously? Yes. Uh, well, trying to. Trying to. <laughs> right, I mean, yes. Sure. Yeah, I'm, I'm, yeah, I'm just I'm trying to, to address and mitigate Chris's concern. Yeah. Where's it? I guess I was going to say I support it too. And I know Daniel's had his hand up for a while, so <laughs> um, I see this and I understand your concern that we're looking at a tough budget and there will be considerations of potentially instructional staff. I'm just going to say that, potentially. But right now, the information we have is that the central office is just barely doing the bare basics, and that's with overtime and staff burning out. That's not a healthy way to run. And so, like Joshua said, if we start losing people because they've burnt out, they take institutional knowledge with them, you can't replace that. And so then the whole system comes crashing down. Right, like how are these teachers gonna get paid? How do we get subs in? How do we, if without that administrative support, they can't run the schools ultimately. So, wait, 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 wait. Okay. Daniel's, sorry. Um, yeah, just a couple points. I mean, I think, I think it's absurd that any institution that has 350 employees doesn't have an, an HR director. I think we should do that. I think we also, to Chris's concerns, I share those concerns, and I think we need to do our, our due diligence. So I think amassing the facts, sort of, sort of to Jonas, Jonas's point, I think that's really important. I think we should try to quantify the overtime. Like Diane said, I think we should try to com compare our central office staff to other central offices <laughs> in terms of a ratio to the district. I think we need to highlight the fact that an administrative pos assistant position was eliminated and that work didn't go away. Um, to your point, I think the need was, I mean, Megan said the need was not known last year. There, there was a reshuffling happening. This was the soonest that this position rose as the clear need. I think, I guess, the, the, I, I agree in part to that point just because it feels like uh, a little sudden to me that we as a board are learning about um, sort of the capacity emergency in central office and I, I would just encourage um, uh, earlier and less urgent notifications if these things are needed in the future. But I, I'm certainly inclined to support the position. Yeah. Thank you. Chris, you had something? There yeah. Had um, the drama of saying checks won't go out to, to teachers or other no, no staff. No one said that. Yeah, no, that's not true. Yeah. That was it's said like, several but, times. But it that was, was said twice. several times. That with with the loss of one more that position. That's not believable. She said that. Um, and, you know, I understand that, that, that there's a real need, uh, but that's not a rationale to me. Um, and, and, and again, um, we are going to be looking at not potentially cutting teaching staff, but cutting teaching staff um, from what we heard and what we assume uh, in, in terms of our budget. So I'm weighing that versus um, administrative staff, and I am making that that, that balance, I am. I, I, I'm being blunt about that um, because you know teaching staff is direct service to students. 
and human resources, certainly indirect service to students, uh, but not direct service. So that's where I am uh, putting my, my eggs in that basket. So. And, and Chris, I'm not trying to diminish your worry because I think we all share the worry that you yeah. know, like it, it, you know, any time we're asked money for for more money in the middle of the budget, it's you know it's it's hard for us knowing where we're headed. But I I also want to say that I, I I do remember having these conversations through like being able to stay on top of the contracts, being able to stay on top of of hiring, being able to like the. You know, we talked about this, I want to say, two superintendents ago. We, we were talking about it, and we just couldn't fit it in. We couldn't get around having a building coordinator and a, not building coordinator, I'm keep coughing, Chris, director of facilities. And, and we prioritized that year, the director of facilities, because we needed the capital plan. And we said, we'll wait on on an HR position because we, you know, we don't understand the system quite well. And then, you know, as you know, we... This is the second year that we have Megan with us. We're able to like really assess the system in a different way, and if we're gonna address the needs of our kids, we are be able to retain the staff that we have. Yeah. We gotta be able to diversify. It was part of the memo: diversify the educator workforce. It's a great big undertaking that really goes with the values that we have as a district. So I, I think this all helps make us a more cohesive, and we just had that discussion about the core values. This aligns with our core values and allows us to, to move our district as a, as a whole. In, I, I don't know. Ursula had another comment. I wanted to address um, the comment Daniel made about just getting it now and having not talked about it, because I remember Megan coming and talking at meetings when we talk staffing. There's been discussions about what central office is doing and how they're trying to shuffle positions and figure out how to make the workload work for them and she's talked about it multiple times last year so i think you know i don't know whether we need to do a better job in reviewing past conversations in our memos but it has been discussed so it's something that we as a board need to start working on that collective knowledge of things that we've had conversations about in the past that may not have had action on them at that time and so they didn't seem as pertinent and then all of a sudden it shows up with a dollar amount and it's like well why aren't why haven't we talked about it before so just quickly we have lost two people last year two people left um two seasoned people who had been here um three three three, three. So, you know, so we, we are feeling that, that ripple. The, but the one thing, well, I don't know how many things it's late. Anyway, so one, one concern, I do have a concern about that too, and maybe what the urgency is, should this be like a policy where you bring this information to us and to understand? Our questions that we came up with was what, what is a comparison of, of um, kind of the, the real value of what's occurring. Mm -hmm. So that, that's one way to address that. Because um, what I heard you saying, Daniel, is that while, yes, we may have had the conversations, boom, all of a sudden now the need is right there. And I absolutely agree that you all were teasing that out. You didn't know and as the rules shuffled. Um, but then I do also want to be clear that while, yes, I will vote for this tonight, I will also have it very clear in my mind as we're taking a look at the full budget. So, you know, I think it's that, um, you know, we have to be clear and understand that each one of us and the way we apply those core principles and the way we apply um, our pillars may look and feel differently from each one of us because we're each individuals. And so part of my consideration in those pillars is understanding the decision I make tonight what that ripple's going to be in as we look at the full budget, and then that may impact how I, what questions I ask and how I work. So, Suzanne, I'm going to clarify a question for you. Uh, if we lost three positions, uh, why isn't this neutral, budget neutral? Because we, we, we filled those positions. Oh, we filled those positions. Okay. Yeah, we, we lost okay. our, our payroll specialist. She left. Um, before that, our financial accountant had left. We filled that position. Uh, and then the, the operations manager left. So we filled all of those. Uh, for about four months, I did payroll mm -hmm. on top of the job that I have. So no, we didn't miss paychecks. 
Give up. <laughs> <laughs> we're not down three positions. We're not down, we're not down three positions. No. We are no, three we're down, down the institutional three. members. Right. That's we're down that institutional yeah. member. okay. so, I will so say we have a, a new person to payroll, and so that is, um, that's an impact. You know, you had somebody very experienced, 20 plus years experience in that position, that it was like second, you know, knowledge for her. Just do it. So that is a big impact on us. Yeah. So I want to piggyback a little, a couple things that Suzanne shared. One is just when those people came on board, we right-sized their jobs. That's mm -hmm. part of how we keep the new people here. So that's part of why when you right-size it, there's something over here that's now not being done. And the second piece, I just, because the comment was directed to me, I was not being dramatic when I said it will impact paychecks. I, I did not say that with the intention of being hyperbolic or dramatic. Mm -hmm. I said it because it's a real concern of mine. And Suzanne is correct. The reason we got paychecks out is because Suzanne supported a new person who's going to do fine. Suzanne has a big job already. And so I just, I was, I, I pride myself on not saying things just to be dramatic. Mm -hmm. It's a real concern I have. Yeah. Still your decision. Okay. Uh, well, they really um, uh, good deliberation. I feel like I've, I've learned a lot from it. Um, and I, I want to say that I'm, inclined to vote for this tonight as well um but part of what um is concerning about this that relates to daniel and others points is that it feels like a significant strategic decision and we're making that decision in advance of not only this budget but the strategic plan and the configuration study and so that's that that's why i'm feeling a bit uncomfortable with it and um, but like the facilities director, it's also, it seems like a wise investment. It seems like something that's necessary. So I guess, I guess what I want to ask is, are there any other significant shifts to the org chart that are being discussed or might be coming down the pike in the coming years? And if the answer is no, that's fine. But I'm just wondering about the context, like where this position fits in in our or chart trajectory, if that makes any sense. Yeah, it's a great question. I would answer it this way. Our intention was to bring it to you as part of the budget, which then I think would make it make more sense in terms of wh why it's strategic, why it's connected to our mission. The reason we're bringing it to you now is more because we don't, it, again, and now I'm repeating myself, is because it doesn't feel like we can wait. So I, that's almost a way of saying this is what we'd be bringing to you. And no, there really isn't anything else big and strategic like that at central office, at least, that would be coming down the pike. Because this would have been it. It just would have been it in a different time frame. I don't know if that's helpful. So I, it's going to be 9 o'clock. Oops, Michaelin. I'll just say briefly that I share Chris's concerns. Um, and it seems like my preference would be to have this discussion as part of the budget discussion because we're going to be weighing positions and um, I worry that you know teachers and um, support staff are burned out also and when I worry that if they see us supporting a brand new administrative position and then a few months later talking about cutting teaching positions um, it's not going to feel good <laughs> um, and it wouldn't feel great to me. So I, my preference would be to have this conversation with all as part of the budget, um, although I do hear the urgency. So. I, I just have okay. one comment and I don't mean to be like back and forth on it, but um, Megan and I both sort of agree with that strategy that it's best to bring things like this to, at budget time. We really do. Um, when I'm meeting with staff weekly and every single meeting I have, I'm worried I'm going to lose them. That's reality. That's why it's coming now. I have at least two people that every week, that's the conversation. What can I do to make this better? Okay, I'll take this from your plate. I'll take this from your plate. So that's what's happening right now. I have two people that could leave anytime now. That's why we've made this decision to bring it to you now. Totally agree with you. Normally, I would do it in a budget season. Absolutely. 
I'm looking for a motion, and then we can go. I think there we have a motion. Call, call, the, call, oh, the, call the question. Oh, yeah, that's right. Yeah, that's Jonas and Daniel, sorry. Okay. I don't see any. We say you have that. So all those in favor of approving a director of human resources position, uh, please uh, signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Reluctantly, no. Any other? I think yeah. no. Yeah. Two. So can you raise your hand? Two. No. Oh. Two. Just to make sure. Reluctantly, no. Three. Okay. So three no's and one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Ten. Ten. Okay. So the motion carries. Thank, thank you. you, everybody. And I know it's hard, but thank you, everybody. Thank you for you. Let's move into yeah. new teachers. Yes, go ahead. Uh, I move to approve the extended leave of absence request for Representative Kate McCann, U32 math teacher, who is requesting a 0.25 leave of absence. Can I ask a question? Second. Okay, so Jonas, Daniel, okay, yes, question. Didn't she retired and then came back? And then, no. She's no. at the state house now. Okay. Stay house. Oh, that's right. Thank you. Yeah. All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Aye. Hearing none, motion carries. Yeah. Yes, please. I move to approve long-term substitutes for the 2023-24 school year. Robin Gannon, goodness gracious, Mary, uh, Marie Eddy, and Mary Lee Richardson. Second. <coughs> that was you, Natasha? Yep. Okay. And where are they? Robin's at East Montpelier. Marie is here. And? With, um, Mary Lou Richardson. Uh, Berlin. Thank you, Jen. All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 All right, and that's that's it. And uh, oh, I'm just going to have a quick update on vacancies now, too. It was part uh, of, no, the, was part of the report. Know. Yeah, okay. For this school year. Is it for the full school year? I'm sorry, this long term subs. Is it for portions of the school year or the full school year? Long term uh, for this school year, for the 2023. Yeah, but long term sub just means it's more than, it doesn't necessarily mean it goes through the end of the year, but it does mean more than, I don't know exactly the return date for some of those. Yeah. Okay. So, future agenda items. Yeah. I think it's late. Yeah. 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 I mean, the work plan, so next October we will be in Romney, um, Caroline is coordinating a local presentation, there will be some board learning, um, it's, there's not a lot of action items, business, there may That's be more the first things. meeting of the month. Right. That would be in Romney. Yep. Okay. okay. All right, a, a motion to adjourn? Nope. No. Oh, no. Oh, no. Oh, no. Oh, no. Oh, yeah, yeah. We also have not reflected. Would you like to Sorry. Yes. Uh, healthy and vigorous debate. Yes. That's what it's all about. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I, at Lisa, could you please send me the link to the minutes? Oh, yeah. So yeah, yeah, but just so I can do it later. Uh, I now move that the board enter into executive session uh, for the purpose of discussion negotiation strategy to include Megan uh, Roy and Suzanne Gann. Okay. Thank you, Jonas. Thank you, Chris. All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 aye.